Hey, Miles here, milesbeckler.com, and welcome to the stream. You know, this live stream is all about making 2021 your best year ever, and that's exactly what we are here to do today. I've got some information that I'm going to cover with you on what I think it takes to increase your happiness and your enjoyment of life this year, and also to increase your business and your cash flow and, and your investments, if you will. Uh, so we're going to go over that. And then I'm going to be taking questions in the comments, in the answer, uh, in the comments and in the live chat. So if you've got questions, get them in and I'm happy to go through them here. Um, Jum, I like, I like the comment that I got caught up in the filters. Jum is going to make 2021 his bitch. And uh, I agree. Like, I think sometimes we have to take that. I've actually thought about emailing that exact phrase and we need to take that approach of like aggressively kind of like doing whatever it takes to make this year what we want it to be right like being an active and engaged creator of your reality is so powerful and so required so many people are living on autopilot and when you live on autopilot you're at the whims of the banks of you're at the whims of the um consumerist advertising specialists who are going to get you to go farther in debt to buy these things versus doing the things that are going to pull you out of debt and build up a nest egg that can float you for the rest of your life, which is an option for everyone. So the first thing I want to talk about before we jump in is that you're going to need discernment. So in this live stream, I'm confident we're going to talk about funnels and Facebook ads, and I'm confident we're going to talk about affiliate marketing and blogging, and I'm confident we're going to talk about my business, and you need to remember that I've been making money online for 18 years now. I've been full-time at this since 2010. So that's 11 years. I'm in my 11th year online full-time. So you should not be trying to replicate what I'm doing. You need to have discernment in what is the best absolute strategy for you. And then here's the real secret to it all. You got to put on the blinders. And I honestly think you got to stop watching the YouTube. And I know that's not good for my YouTube channel growth, but that's not why I'm here, right? Eventually you need to get to the point where you're just like, this is my strategy. This is my game plan. Blinders are on. I'm, I'm shutting everything else out and I'm just doing the work because every hour you spend on YouTube trying to learn something is an hour that could have been spent making your best guess of implementation. And ultimately, that's where the truest learning comes from. So I think this year to make this year really your best year ever it's it's going all in on one core skill now this might be a new skill that you're adding on or you might just realize that one of these things you're doing out of everything you're doing really results in everything so um if you're on the affiliate marketing game you might just realize that that like keyword research let's let's just say content marketing right keyword research um blog post optimization and writing great content that's like that's what makes the game work like that's it Go all in on that. Ignore everything else. The one core skill, just really master that. Do it hundreds of times over. If you're on YouTube, making videos, that's that's the game, right? And then likewise, if you're in the Facebook ads and the funnels, it, it's split testing, it's conversion optimization, and it's, and it's copywriting. So understanding what that one thing for you is, and for me, it's email marketing. Um, I think that, that this year I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to give more value in email than any other platform. So if you're not getting my emails, if you're not on my list, you can always go to milesbeckler.com forward slash emails, right? Milesbeckler.com slash emails. The link is in the description and you could just sign up right there. Um, and that's it. You'll get my emails. But I think that building a better, stronger relationship with you via email to keep dripping these ideas, these motivational moments, these tidbits, these stories that are going to keep you going so you can master your one skill because it's really that mastery of one thing that opens up all of the doors. I'm a little bit of a jack of all trades. And that is in one sense, it could be looked at as benefit, but man, that, that is a detriment in many senses. Um, and then the bigger, greater philosophy, you've probably heard me say that you need to create more than you consume, right? Like that, that's just the way it is to grow anything online, but you need to sell more than you buy as well. Okay. So we're going to apply that same framework to sell more than you buy, because if you're selling more things than you're buying, that means you're cash flow positive, right? That means you have monies to start to invest, to break free from the kind of structured games of oppression that are being played at fiscal levels, uh, trying to hold people down and keep people stuck. You need to earn more than you spend. And even if this is, even if you're hourly, even if you're doing 40 hours a week, so then you're earning whatever 40 hours a week brings you, you better be spending 30 hours a week or less every month, or else you're going to be operating at a deficit. You're going to be causing problems for your future self. But when you spend 30 hours of what you earn and you earn 40 hours, that means that it's that 10 hour difference. And I don't know if you're 20 bucks an hour or if you're a hundred bucks an hour, but every week you get that 10 hour difference and you can start to invest that. You can start to put that in places that it can ultimately 
support you later in life. And there is a point of financial freedom. Um, and I don't love that word because it's abuse, but there is a point where the income from your investments can be greater than your lifestyle. Um, so more income from investments and a cheaper lifestyle helps you get to that point. And at that point, you're free. You know, Mr. Money Mustache hit that point at 30. I'm gonna hit that point right here at about 40. And it's complete freedom from that point else. Um, and ultimately I'm here to, to be with you guys. So, um, and, and y'all ladies and y'all in betweeners, we'll call you in betweeners at this point in time. Um, Justin, I'm stoked to hear you're going to be hit and publish on a new article or video every day for your website, 90 day challenge, maybe even a 365 day challenge. That's, that's the idea of, you know, making this year, your year. Um, you got to do, we got to do that extra level. We got to do what our competitors aren't doing. We got to do what the other people trying to get after the attention. We got to do what they're not willing to do and what they're not actually doing at this point in time. Uh, so Saeed asks, what does Miles say about a Shopify store? If you have an audience who wants to buy physical products from you, Shopify is a great way to sell it, but you could also use WooCommerce. If you don't have an audience of people and you don't know what they want to buy, then a Shopify store is a tool um, that might not necessarily have the right use for you. Um, Arlen says, I'm working on my list of goals for this year. Uh, happy to be doing this live for you. And remember, like really go all in. Like for me, again, it's email. Like I'm going to keep showing up on YouTube for you guys. I'm going to keep putting out blog content, but all of my real focus is on how can I create another email that's going to help you really move your life forward, help you take that next step forward. Uh, because I feel that email is so underrated and email is such a powerful mechanism for really keeping you on track and keeping me on track. So although I've been, I've sent out like 800 emails to my list over the years, uh, many years uh, in sending those out, um, I'm, I'm going to double down on that one skill for this year to really take my email marketing uh, to the next level. I've um, got Elaine on here, Jack D. Uh, man, so many people. I, I appreciate it. I'm scrolling down now. Um, Justin is currently in South New Mexico on that nomad life. I love it. So I'm guessing uh, cruises. My wife's family is all from... Um, it's like the Silver City area. Um, I went to University of New Mexico, lived in New Mexico for four years. Uh, love, love New Mexico. Um, Isaac in Sonoma, um, Willie from Colorado, Jeff, Aaron, Money Lab. Oh, what's up? We got Matt on. I'm going to be live on Matt Giovanneschi's channel Wednesday. So uh, if you want, I'll, I'll email you guys that. So again, milesbecker.com slash emails to stay up to date. I'm scrolling down looking, man, there are so many. I'm honored with this. Um, let me get to here. Hi, I've just started. I've just started my business. What's the best way to get your product out there? Marketing and advertising, right? Like literally advertising. Learning how to advertise is the fastest way to get your content out there. So I last year I spent about one hundred sixty thousand dollars on Facebook ads. From that one hundred sixty thousand dollars in ad spend, we got something like seventy five thousand subscribers added to our list, and I brought in about seven thousand over seven thousand customers. I don't remember the exact number of customers. So when I did the math, multiplying the number of customers by my lifetime value. Um, it turns out that I brought in about $550,000 worth of value from $160,000 of ad spend. So to me, there is no faster way to getting the message out, if you will, about your products and services than advertising. Uh, it's really challenging. And you got to go all in on copywriting, right? You got to become an absolute master of copywriting. Facebook ads, you got to learn the specifics. I teach all of that for free at socialadclass.com. But once you learn the specifics of how to structure your campaigns, it's really about the message in the ad. It's not the audiences. It's not like, what buttons do I push in Facebook? That's not the challenging part. That's the really easy part. The challenging part is, how do I, how do I write sales copy? And how do I write advertisements that are going to really draw people in and, and help them realize that, that my products will assist them in creating a, a better life. Um, Norman Bailey from the Poconos. Uh, I love, love that word. I don't, I don't even know. I think it's upper New York. Welcome. Um, how can you start? Uh, Nadia asks, how can I start a business on Fiverr for WordPress? You literally, you go to Fiverr, you start doing gigs. Like you need to start by offering really high quality services at a low price because you need to gain attention in a crowded marketplace. And then from there, you just deliver epic service. You get positive reviews, deliver epic service, increase your prices as you get more authority. But really, you need to get up to 100, 200 five-star reviews as fast as you can. 
Now, the keto guy says, will $5 be working to run Google ads and will it convert for ClickBank products if the landing page is attractive? So um, I personally hate ClickBank, right? I'm at this point now where, where I think I can officially say that, that ClickBank is the scammiest, worst marketplace in the world. There are extremely few products on that marketplace that are truly high quality. So I want you to flip that around, keto guy. A, if you know there's a great, I don't know anything about keto, by the way. If you know there's a great keto product on there and you actually use it and you love it, ignore everything I just said about it. Then it's a perfect opportunity for you. But don't plan to direct link someone from Google to the the advertiser themselves. Like that that's you spending your money to market them. What you need to do is spend your money to market you. And you would advertise them to an opt-in for a lead magnet for something of value they would subscribe and then you would engage in email marketing with them. And then you can promote that ClickBank product. You can promote other products. You can promote Amazon products. You can promote all kinds of things once you get them on your email list. And that's so important. You know, my first business that I started running as an affiliate marketer was on MySpace and I was direct linking people from MySpace over to the actual vendor themselves. Um, that all came crashing down and it went to zero. Had I been building an email list, it never would have gone to zero. It would have, my income would have dropped when they turned off my links, but I could have kept sending more emails. I could have kept building the relationship. I could have kept kind of moving the relationship forward, helping more people who, when they first saw my message, the timing wasn't right, but three months later, the timing's right. And that's when they purchase. Um, Dean Jackson did a study that of all customers, so the 100% pie of customers, 85% of people who become customers don't do so until after 90 days. So if you're only direct linking from Google right now, buy this thing right now, and that's the one chance I'm giving you, you're only open to the 15% of people who will eventually buy, which is obviously the smaller segment. How do you open yourself up to the bigger segment? It's email marketing. And that's really the key. Um, Sanat, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that I've been inspirational for you. Um, you want to know what my inputs are, on, that consistency on doing something. How will it work on the long term? I mean, consistency is everything. Like if you study the habits of millionaires, if you study the habits of successful people, it's, it's small, consistent actions done over long periods of time. And if you study people who fail, they think it's a big thing. They think it's some big monumental push and then boom, I'm there. Um, but the truth is little, little, little. As my friends in Mexico would say, poco, 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 little, little, little. Um, that's how we get down very, very, very long paths. And that, that's really the, the true piece here. Um, Givaneshi is going all in on video this year. I love it. Um, yep. Stop the spam. I gotcha. Thank you for, for calling that out. That user is gone. Um, and I, there are no warnings on this channel. I just pretty much, uh, remove people when they're out. Damn, this is crazy. How, um, hide user. There we go. Gone. Spam is out. Y'all people can't, can chill out. I'm maybe a few minutes behind on the chat, but I'm here with you guys. I'm going to get through these questions. Um, Krupelli says, I want to design an English speaking course for English struggler. Please guide you in designing content. That's, that's your job, man. That's not for me to do that. That is literally your job. Grow an audience, figure out what they want, create it for them. Literally go watch my ATM. I have a video called the ATM strategy and it explains exactly how that all works. Jeff question. I appreciate you being on the list. My man, uh, Jeff is an email subscriber. And if you were on the email list, you'd understand how I know that. And why? Um, you love the purple lighting. Great to hear. Are uh, you doing the 90 day challenge? That's perfect. So how can you make audio version a one time offer of the lead magnet garage band or audacity? Um, so I'm assuming your lead magnet is an ebook. And then you're talking about doing an OTO that would be the, um, like an audiobook version of it. Just literally record it into your computer. So I'm on a Shure SM7B, which is an XLR mic. Sure has a new mic out that's like a 7B. It's like a direct USB. You literally plug a good microphone into your computer, however that works, and then record directly into Audacity or GarageBand. If you have a Mac, you can record straight into GarageBand. 100% free. You already have it. Uh, if you're on a PC, you can use Audacity and you just record it and consider hiring an audio specialist on Fiverr or Upwork to just kind of do a once over on your audio, clean up the ums, the uhs, remove like any lip smacking or awkward sounds like slurping of tea. You don't want that on your final product that you're, you're purchasing for. So hire someone to, to remove that out for you. Um, 
So 114 outdoors says, wow, 90 days. I'm happy to finally get your first six written in the month of December. That's awesome, man. And like, you got to do what you can do. This is that discernment idea. So I started this YouTube channel with 120 videos in 120 consecutive days. Um, Turn up that volume a little bit. So 120 videos in 120 consecutive days. And that's what it took for me to really um, kick myself into motion. Some people got kids and jobs and other things that don't allow them the freedom to go as aggressive. Uh, So you do you, but find what pace you can run at an accelerated pace. Maybe that's three a week. You can do three a week. Great. Do that for a year or two straight. That's where you really, really grow. Um, Rita says, or is asking, um, Miles, what do you think about the TikTok platform and the plethora of unknown information that's finally coming out? You think this is a great platform for content? What do I think? I think it's another fad. I don't see it as a long-term strategy. I think there's obviously people who are cashing in on it who will always cash in on it as with every new fad, but this is the modern version of Snapchat. And a couple of years ago, all the talk and Gary Vee was, oh, you gotta be on Snapchat and look at the uh, cranberry juice guy riding a skateboard. Look how many views he got. Um, I don't care. I am here. The way I build businesses is to help people solve problems because people are usually willing to invest money to solve their problems. And when someone knows they have a problem, okay, they're problem aware in the words of Eugene Schwartz, um, what do they do? They go to a search engine, Google or YouTube, and they search for a solution. Now, there's another layer of abstraction where podcasting comes in and they know that they need to learn investing. Like I have a problem. Um, I have a surplus of cash flow that I'm bringing in. And I don't know what to do with this cash flow to safely increase my yield. Well, that's when people will go down the podcast route and they will just consume podcast after podcast after podcast. Um, And so that's why I don't think that TikTok is ultimately a way. It's just a fad. Um, It's a younger demographic for sure. Um, But ultimately, I want to be a I want to rank on search. I'm a search marketer. So that's through my lens. Um, That's really what I what I think there. So Taki says, uh, tuning in from Africa, I'm dying here. How can I make a consistent $500 a month? Definitely watch my affiliate marketing content. You could sell services. I mean, that's what this channel's built on, right? I, this video is not going to rehash and regurgitate everything I've taught in my 600 other videos, but just start with my affiliate marketing 2021 video. Um, Dana Pollock says, I'm just getting started. What company do I recommend to build a website? So I think you should do that yourself. If you go to my website, uh, milesbeckler.com, on the top navigation, it says literally start your website site or how to start a site. I think it's how to start a blog, how to start a site. Just follow that post. I show you step-by-step how to build a self-hosted WordPress website, which is what you need. Um, Studio 541, I'm not going to ignore your comment. Go watch my video that is a deep dive on asking essentially how to start at affiliate marketing. I have a video that's a deep dive that teaches you how to start at affiliate marketing. Omi V, uh, good to see your question in here. I'm glad you're an email subscriber, milesbeckler.com slash emails if you're not getting my emails. Um, given how many of you are dedicated to the digital products way since 2020, what are my thoughts regarding network marketing, MLM, direct sales uh, in a good niche? I think network marketing is a terrible business model for 99% of people who get into network marketing, okay? Uh, Network marketing is a model where it's like, go sell your three friends or family members, pitch everybody you know. Um, You're an untrained salesperson. You're an untrained marketer. Go get other untrained salespeople and untrained marketers to awkwardly go promote something. Um, It's a recipe for disaster. And the people who make the most are the people who have either figured out a way to team build, which is a remarkably challenging thing, right? So it's difficult to get for me, Miles Beckler, to get me, Miles Beckler, to do shit, right? Like like getting myself out of my own way to get up and do things is difficult. To, for me to get other people to do things is magnitudes more difficult, right? For me to get you to go take action, which is what this channel is built on, it is so, I can't control your actions. And network marketing puts your income based on your ability or inability to control other people's actions. I don't like it. Affiliate marketing is a far superior business model. You get better margins straight away and then you can create your own products. Um, But ultimately, um, I've enrolled hundreds if not thousands of um, 
distributors in a downline. Um, I've been the silver and six. I've gotten awards. I've been walked across the stage at network marketing businesses, and I've walked away from them completely because they are not built to really help you generate cash flow quickly. They're built to help the leaders generate maximum cash flow at the expense of huge swaths of distributors. And so 99% of people end up in the, the distributor side of things. And that that's the problem. Um, Mario says, I need to make money as soon as possible. Um, the absolute fastest way to make money is to go get a job, right? To build an affiliate marketing business, you're talking six months, one year, one year and a half, two years for most people to build an affiliate marketing business. If you have merchantable skills, you're a graphics designer, you're a video editor, you, you know how to produce videos for people, um, you know, SEO, content marketing, you've, you've been building for several years and you have these skills, you can sell services is the other fast way. But, but essentially, those are the two fast ways there. Um, Lance is in from West Virginia. Good to see you here. Um, Alex Robles. Good to have you here, my man. Uh, how do I balance constantly creating new content when you feel that you've written about most topics already and you don't want to keep repeating yourself and do keyword cannibalization? So, uh, First and foremost, I'm building a tool to help you uh, see clearly where that line is because I think you're a uh, content and conversion member. So that that hopefully will be out in a, a month or two in the membership. Um, you go back and you you update the old posts that are getting impressions. So to do this, technically speaking, I spend a lot of time in Google Search Console and I pay attention to what's getting lots of impressions and what's getting lots of clicks in Search Console. If something's getting a lot of impressions but a low amount of clicks, so it has a low click-through rate, I'll focus on the, the title and the description, trying to optimize those. Uh, but something that's getting a lot of clicks, um, I'll go in and I'll just keep updating those posts. So it's like, don't keep saying the same thing. Go back into that old post and improve it and make it better and make it the 2021 version. You know, we're now in 2021. Everybody thinks the game has changed, right? So my SEO, my Learn SEO video that's still as relevant today as when I first created it uh, three years ago, um, people constantly comment, is this still relevant in 2021? Yes, it is. But it's human nature to think, oh, this is three years old. Obviously, everything has changed since. Uh, what they don't get is that my strategies are timeless and evergreen because I just want to do shit once and move on. Uh, with that said, then Alex, there's, there's what is the next um, ring that you can kind of get out to, right? So there's always another level. So let's say I'm in the fountain pen niche, right? This is one of them fancy little fountain pens that I, I enjoy using. Uh, so let's say I'm in the fountain pen niche. Calligraphy becomes that space I can get into, right? Or um, hand lettering or um, pin striping. So it's like, what is that next little thing, that next most logical step that your audience is also searching for? And, and you can find these by looking at your, your competitors on similarweb.com and other places. Um, I sent a link to a Facebook training course, but it's pricey. And with someone else, is this different than my Facebook training? Um, so V, uh, socialadclass.com is my training, but it's taught in conjunction with my ad guy who runs my ads for me. Um, Demetrius, hello from London. How can you sell a physical product on your Instagram audience? Um, you can host a live stream and you can just tell people what to buy. Um, you can just sit down one-on-one -on -one live chat. See, I don't do Instagram like... I'm, I'm awkwardly bad at social um, because I don't want to sell people things. I want to, again, I'm a search engine marketer. So I want people who are looking for what I sell to find me, right? So if someone's looking for a fountain pen, I just want to rank number one in Google when they type in what's the best fountain pen. Like, and then I'll rank and they'll click and they'll buy my fountain pen because I ranked first. And that, that ranking can live on for years and years and years. So I just, I just think Instagram's a joke. I think Instagram is one of the biggest waste of times and one of the weirdest psychological dopamine experiments we've ever had in our world. Um, I don't allow that app on my phone. I don't answer any direct message. Oh my God, I'm, people just spam me out. I post every once in a while because like to be mildly relevant, but um, I, I don't think it's uh, interesting in that sense to build a real business on. Um, do I have a general store online or a specific product? Um, I would say specific products. Um, Faith, I'm glad that you, you joined the email list. Uh, I will be sending lots of great stuff for you there. Um, Lorna, you've been binge watching the videos ever since Bunty. Oh, Bunty's awesome. He was your first Facebook mentor. That's awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Jonathan, I mentioned your name. You will never wash the ears again. That's hilarious. Um, just scrolling through. Um, Jay, what's up, man? Good to see you here. I hope you're getting some beautiful precipitation in Boulder. 
what is the best affiliate network? Sanway. Um, the best affiliate network is the affiliate network that is selling things your audience is already purchasing. So it's so easy when you when we promote things people want to buy. When I know somebody's ready to buy a fountain pen, I know they're ready to buy this thing. Then I'm going to sell them a fountain pen. And who's the best affiliate vendor for that? I don't know. I go find the, this pen. So this is a pilot. This is actually kind of an inexpensive one. I think it's about 25 bucks. I just go find where, where sell these. And it might be Blick Art Supplies, but it might be Amazon. And I might include both links. Um, but that's it. It's, it's not about finding a product or about finding an affiliate network first. It's about going all in on your audience, growing an audience of people who know you, like you, and trust you, and then helping them buy what they're already buying. Because most people are... Most people are buying lots of stuff anyways, and you just want to get in between them and their transactions by helping them make the right decision. It's solving the decision fatigue problem is the easiest approach. Um, but he says, travel authority blog in 2021. What's my thoughts? You're probably in for a rough year or two, but when travel opens back up because the world gets back to normal, whether that's 2022, 2023, um, look out boom, uh, travel is going to go big, right? The, the pendulum swings both ways. So there's a lot of pent up travel demand and desire. Um, Lorna says you bought the social ad class. You love it. You're implementing the ATM strategy. Awesome. However, you're trying to figure out how long it'll take to bring down your cost per lead and your cost per purchase. So a, you should always be split testing the pages you're sending them to, right? So how long will it take for you to create five or six split tests to really dial in a sales mechanism that converts at 8% instead of 1%. Because if you change that on your site, your conversion mechanism, if you can increase that by 800%, your same exact ad campaigns might go profitable like that. And that's what I've been doing. And that's what I spend my time on. So in my shift from... So in 2019, I spent $60,000 on Facebook ads. My average cost per customer was $28. And last year I spent 160,000. So I spent $100,000 more and my cost per new customer dropped from 28 down to $20. And that really wasn't as much to do with my Facebook approach, even though running those, doing the ATM, as, as you understand, it did help. But I did a lot of testing on my sales copy. I did a lot of testing on my offers. And that's really what made the change. I found the offers that convert like crazy. So how long is it going to take for really kind of uh, going through that over and over? Um, that's, that's, that's up to you. How long does it take you to write a sales letter? How long does it take you to write a video sales letter? How much are you buying? How many days or weeks is it going to take to get enough traffic for statistical significance is kind of the, the question. Um, Nell Vanderloo says, for your book, your own website, learning marketing, you're feeling challenged. It's a challenging game, man. This ain't easy, even though the fake gurus are going to tell you it's easy, but it's worth it in the long run. Go all in on one skill this year. Focus on one at a time. So many people, they try to take on too many learning curves at the same time. They're going to do YouTube and a podcast, and then they're going to put it on their blog, and then they're going to run Facebook ads, and then they're going to do funnels very, very, very few people can take on that many new things at one time, right? It takes a very special type of person to be able to do that. But when we go one thing at a time, for me, I just went on these videos and I did in my first year, I did like 200 and something videos. I think it was about 250 videos in one year. I barely even got my list started. I barely posted my blog that year. I didn't run any Facebook ads that year. I didn't create any products that year. I was just all in on one skill uh, to master it. And then I layered on the next and the next, and here I am four years in on this channel and the skill I'm like, YouTube is an afterthought. Like I don't have to really think much about this video. I had to come up with it and put the thumbnail together. But the prep for this video was an hour or two. Um, really my, my brain matter, my thought process, my awareness, what am I, what am I practicing at getting better is all in on that email. How do I give more value in email? Um, Awesome. Willie, glad to have you here. Truth hurts. Um, I think you're, you're bringing in some truth here. Um, Shankar, as a doctor, what products can you promote on blogs? You want to start blogging soon? Whatever your audience wants, that, that is really the, the key. Um, Shakila, so question. Uh, glad I'm helping you improve your content. Your problem is what to promote as an affiliate. Uh, you don't want, don't want to create a course. What is your audience already buying? What do people want to buy? Um, like affiliate marketing is not about inventing a need. Um, we're never supposed to invent 
uh, a need. You can't create demand within your audience. You can't create a desire within your audience. What you can do is figure out what they already want and what they're already buying and then offer them more of that. It's that simple. So if your audience is in handwriting, fonts, lettering, it's a calligraphy, then they probably want to buy a calligraphy set. Then they probably want to buy, maybe they want to buy an artist's table. Maybe they want to buy bold calligraphy pens. I don't know. And you could do keyword research to find out what the search phrases are that they're searching for. Um, but it's that idea of they're already spending money. Your audience is like every one of you on this stream right now, we got 243 people, 106 thumbs ups, hit that thumbs up. Let's get that up to 150 if you would be willing to help me out. But of the 240 people, three people dropped off right as I said that. Yes. Um, so of the 240 people who are on this live stream right now, you all, I would, I would put, I would literally bet that 80% of you are going to buy something within two days from online. I would really bet that within a week, I bet we're at like 95% of everyone on this is going to purchase something in an e-commerce um, platform. I don't know what that is. You might buy web hosting. You might buy a new microphone. You might buy uh, a theme. You might buy a software tool. You might buy a fountain pen. I don't actually know right yet, but that's my job as an affiliate marketer is to figure out like, okay, so we just had this discussion trying to help you get here in 2021. What are the things you're going to need to get a book? Like, oh my gosh, like, could I send an email following up with this saying like, here's the three books you need to read to make 2021 your best year? Of course. And those would be affiliate links in that email. Voila. Right. So it's again, it's thinking about what do you need my audience? That's really what helps. Boom. I just saw those thumbs up go spike. I really do appreciate seeing that. It does help me. Like I, I try not to, I don't run ads on my videos at all. Um, there are no ads. If you ever see one comment and say there's an ad here, cause it's somebody trying to scam some ad money. I have ads turned off. I don't pitch things on these videos. I really, really, really try to keep it all about the value. And I don't even ask for the engagements much. Most people just spend half an hour, smash that like button. And I was just like, dude, do people, people really say that in real life? It's absolutely absurd to me. Um, so I do appreciate it when you share it, when you post this link on your Facebook, on your Twitter, when you post this link on Reddit to, to get other people here. Um, we're going to be here for a while. I'm, I'm, I, got, I got a full mug of tea and a full thing of water. I'm just hanging out. Back to the questions. Let's get in here. Um, uh, I'm gonna call you Peter. Peter Jung, I'm thinking from Belgium. Uh, you speak Dutch, so your market's smaller. That's awesome. That's fine. What would you say is a good average search volume uh, to have nice potential? So it's it's relative, right? Um, so many people think there's a magic number. I'm targeting, even in Facebook ads, audiences of this size or keywords that have this many searches, but it's all relative. So in the pen space, uh, the average search, it might be 400. Cool. So I know 400 people a month search for this, but how many people search for the um, Pilot G2? I know y'all know about the Pilot G2 pens. They, these are amazing. Or the best gel ink pen, right? So they might be searching best gel ink pen and then best um, fountain pen. And this might have 400 searches a month and this one might have 600 searches a month. Cool. This has more than this, right? It's not like I'm thinking, oh, well, I need one that has 1,200 a month or I'm not going to take any action. I don't care. I'm just like, well, which one gets more? This one? Okay, I'll write this post first. This post is done this afternoon. Then what am I doing tomorrow? I'm writing it on this post because what else am I doing? And this is the whole plan, like all in on content. So it's it's relative. So in your world, it might be 300 to 1500 is the range. Well, cool. Start with the ones on the higher end of the range, but you got the whole year of 2021 ahead of you. You should be able to put out 200 plus posts this year eventually you're going to get through all of them. So spend less time thinking this one or that one, this and more time writing and publishing is really the key. Um, David Phillipson, good to have you here. You were watching the affiliate marketing course video. Awesome. Uh, there's an option for done for you affiliate sites. Is this something I would recommend? So I've purchased one of those and it's a nice little head start but it's a little head start. It's a $1,200 head start. Some of them have traffic and sales already, which is great, um, but it's it's just a little head start. So if you get one, which I did, because I didn't want to spend the eight, 10 hours building it up myself, really didn't want to spend the eight, 10 hours of researching what niche. I loved being able to just scroll through and purchase. Um, it worked wonderfully for me. I think it was a great move for me in that scenario, but it's not necessary. You can just start. Uh, so it's, it's like, where are you, right? If you're, if you're a lawyer or a solicitor and you're making $400 an hour and you're billing 
2,000 hours per year and you're super busy, of course, it's a very good investment. But if you don't have a job right now and you're thinking about putting on a credit card, probably better to build the skills because the skills of how to build that out could be valuable in other ways. And adding debt right now is just a terrible idea. Um, I don't think anybody should be adding more debt at this point in time. Um, and V, can you create landing pages and opt in through your blog and WordPress? Yes. Go through my DIY sales funnel video series. Um, Thrive Architect is what I use. I show how to do that in that video series. Um, or if you go to milesbeckler.com slash DIY dash funnel or DIY dash sales funnel, search my blog for DIY sales funnel. I have it in, in a blog format. Everything's neatly tied there. Um, knee to Lin says, is a dog food niche saturated? So here's one cool way to look at it. Everything's saturated. What are you willing to go all in on and be a champion for, for the next three years? Do you really love dogs? Do you have six or seven dogs? Are you just like in, like you just, you just can't help but bring home puppies all the time. Then you probably would be good to go into the dog food, the dog, the pet, the pet niche. Um, if you don't have a dog and you don't want a dog and you don't like dogs and you're allergic to dogs, probably not good to go into that niche. But like every niche is saturated today. There's relative talking about it. Um, but ultimately you need to dig in and do the actual research to, to get data on that. If that's what you want. Um, Yesnia, I do appreciate your, your kind words. So Yesnia Reyes um, says, thank you. Uh, you've grown your email list to 400. You just started it last month. Uh, you were able to sell 10 eBooks that you just created. So like, that's it. That's the business model. And I'm happy to have you here. And just remember, so as you move forward, Yesnia, we entrepreneurs have this creepy, not creepy. That's a terrible word. We have, we can sometimes have a thought creep in. That's like, cool. Now that I've got that going, I'm gonna go do something different. Now I'm gonna get on TikTok. Keep doing whatever work to make that happen. I would look through what email drove all of those sales. Um, what did you do to create that? Did you survey your list before you made that ebook? Literally do what worked again, do what worked again and, and staying focused on just continuing to do what worked will do more of what works. So if you sold 10, you could sell a hundred. And when you sell a hundred, you can sell a thousand. And when you sell a thousand, you're going to be like, ah, like that's when it gets really, really fun. And it literally is doing more of the same success from where you're at to, to like where I'm at in some senses, like from a fiscal, you know, bringing in tens of thousands of customers per year, which is where I'm at right now. Um, it's pretty boring. And that's what people don't love. They think entrepreneurship is adventurous and it's always, and not really, it's kind of doing the same stuff. Like I'm doing a video again on a Monday. It's the same damn thing, right? Uh, I send out my emails all the time. I go, I wake up, cup of coffee, sit down, type out an email, you know? And so it's like, um, acknowledge and embrace the monotony of it and you'll be served greatly. I think the, the biggest mistake I made from when I started getting sales online was when I started like, oh man, now I can do this. Now I can do that. Now I can do this. And I split my focus instead of just doing that one thing that worked over and over and over. And now that I'm there I and mean, it's simplifying my life, I'm getting more free time, uh, which is awesome, but, but I'm getting better results at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, Cheryl says, good morning from Eastern Oregon. Um, awesome. My, my family's in Bend, um, was just in Bend recently. Um, please explain the tactics on how to build your business without it, especially Facebook and Insta. Um, so I don't use social, just YouTube and blog, like literally just content marketing. So on my channel, I have a ton of videos about keyword research and content marketing. So dig into those two worlds and that's where you're going to find all of the kind of how to do it. Um, Jumhead says, I'm like an influencer without the celeb status. Uh, I appreciate that, man. And I uh, like, I want to keep it real. Like I'm a real person. I split firewood. Um, I deal with, with housing, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just a normal person. It, it's weird to me to have built this, this audience, this size. Um, and I, I want to kind of like, I want to bring us back down to earth because it's not about Lambos and lavish lifestyle. That's that's an Instagram culture of trying to make myself feel good by making other people feel like they have lack. And that's how I sell. And to me, that's just wrong. Like, I think if I could just help 10,000 people build real businesses online and become economic engines for their families and for their communities, I think we can maybe save the ship or right the ship because the ship is pointed at the cliff and the rocks right now. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. Um, Linda is confirming the choice of Thrive Themes. I, I love it. Um, happy to hear that, Yesnia. That, that's awesome. Um, the keto guy, may I give the people a lead magnet and after providing them a lead magnet on the fake Q page, can you pitch a product with an attention grabbing headline? Yes. And you can do it with a video. I call that a bridge page. And if you look, I have a video on YouTube. It's older, but it's still very relevant. Um, how to build an affiliate marketing funnel in 30 minutes. It, it leverages that. 
Okay, so um, Joe Bellante, uh, Bellante or Bellanti? Uh, it's probably Italian, so I think I hit the L's. Joe Bellanti. Apologize if I got that wrong. Um, prego, prego. Um, can I talk about the authority site system I sent out yesterday? Is there more value than watching my affiliate trainings I've created myself? So um, if you don't know, my friend Mark and Gael, um, who I've known personally, I personally have access to their um, premium pro level course that's a couple thousand, and I have their authority site system. It is hands down the best affiliate marketing training step-by-step video by video in order. They just rebuilt it to 3.0. So uh, they redid, I think it was either 120 or 160 new videos. Either way, it's a stupid amount of work they just put into it. And it's 100% relevant right now. And most of their students did really well through this last algorithm update that just hit in December 3rd. So yes, I think it is, you're getting two things when you buy their system. And for anybody wondering, like, what is this that I'm talking about? Open a new tab on your browser and go to milesbeckler.com forward slash T-A-S-S. -S. I'll put that in the chat real quick. So it's in the chat. Um, so milesbeckler.com forward slash T-A-S-S. -S. It's on discount for like three days or two days right now. Um, you'll get two things from that course. Number one is you're gonna save a ton of time and distraction from the YouTube algorithm. So what I mean by that is, so you're watching one of my videos, right? YouTube video, no ads, cause I don't wanna distract you. Uh, but then you got the suggested videos, you got the things that pop up at the end and you can find these rabbit holes. And all of a sudden you've spent five or six hours watching videos and you end up kind of somewhere off topic or tangential to where you started. You're down the rabbit hole, which, so YouTube's designed to do this, right? So behaviorally speaking, they have like sociologists and behavioral scientists designed to figure out how to get you to binge watch YouTube. That is their goal because that's their revenue system, which is not in alignment with what you want. So you're on a separate platform and their videos are just do this. Here's a spreadsheet. Here's a worksheet. Here's how to do it. Do this. And they walk you step by step by step. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that these videos are literally step by step. Now my videos are, I'm, I'm an overview guy. I do have a lot of nuts and bolts things, but I'm not updating them. So let's say for example, my DIY sales funnel video that I mentioned. Um, in order for you to build exactly what I showed to build on that, you're gonna have to adapt because they changed the interface. So the navigation on the tool moved over here and they changed they change things. And I'm, I can't go update that video and I'm not going to. It's good enough. Um, someone who wants to figure it out can figure it out. It was more than I had when I got going essentially. Uh, but if you want someone who's gonna give you that kind of literally super up to date, built within the last couple of weeks, step by step, absolutely. So think about how much is your time worth um, and then just, just, so what I mean is, I don't know, you got a day job. Um, you're making 30 bucks an hour, 40 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour. And then literally when you see the price, I don't even know exactly what the price is. I just know it's on a big discount for a bit. Uh, when you see what the price is, calculate how many hours would that save you? Don't even think about the, how much you're going to get the value of this, that, like how many hours would that save you? Be like, okay, do I think I can figure it out with that many hours on YouTube? I, I think YouTube is a trap, which is why I said in the beginning, have discernment, know when you got your plan, put on the blinders and disappear. So if you get it, so to go one step beyond, if you do get it, um, connect with our Facebook group, but stop watching YouTube videos. Stop, I literally unsubscribe from my emails. I would literally say like, do nothing but follow their system for literally like a year or two. I know some of their students. Um, I know Josh Dunlop who has a million dollar business. He does like a hundred and something thousand dollars a month on a photography blog. Um, I've, I've sat down with him. I've met him in person. Um, I've met him in person. Um, like I know a lot of students and I, I know the guys, I know authority hacker. They're totally trustworthy guys. The people who succeeded the fastest and have really made amazing stories are the people who like put on the blinders. They stopped consuming content anywhere else. And they just went all freaking in on it. It's a huge potential. Um, and, and I think it makes really good sense. Um, so Daniel says only have a sales funnel ads, email, or also send them to affiliate blog about the topic. Yep. Do both eventually, right? Uh, figure out what your best starting point is and you can do both. So if I've got, um, a Facebook ad that goes to an email list that then sends offers from the email list, I can send valuable emails in between my pitches in order to kind of move the needle in the trustworthy, um, 114 outdoors. When should I actually pursue an affiliate link on your website? How many blogs or pieces of content, 
Oh, sorry. I just clicked and I lost where you were. Um, control fine. 114 was in your username. Sorry. Um, comments jump around. There you go. Uh, so when, when should I actually pursue an affiliate link on your site? When you're getting daily traffic, when you're getting three visits a day, five visits a day, 10 visits a day um, before you approach them. So in, to approach them, you go through a network, but the network wants to see that you have a real website, that you have real traffic, that you're really actually growing. To get into Avant Link, which is like the, the premium affiliate network in your space, you need to be bringing in something like 10, 20,000 visits per month. Um, but you can get onto Amazon and other smaller ones through like share sale when you're getting, you know, dozens of visits per day. Um, the helpful trucker, my man, um, good to see you here. Um, God, I know your name too. Maurice Bay, my man, there it is. Um, so Maurice, I was watching and I literally was thinking about you yesterday. So, uh, Roberto Blake, who's a YouTuber, how to do YouTube. He was doing a channel review live stream yesterday uh he reviewed a trucker channel it was like cj's trucking or something like that and he gave cj he paid cj paid him and then got to have his video viewed it was like a four or a six hour stream i think it was two hours in flip through i don't know i thought you might be able to get some um insights from what roberto said about cj truckings but um all in all, keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I, I've, I've watched I've watched a number of your videos, dude. Just like watching you, you know, hook up trucks, your kid roaming around. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's um, it's YouTube. It's just like, it's amazing. We can just watch other people do their thing and it's enjoyable. So good to see you here. Um, cool. So question, Shakila, you didn't explain your niche. Your niche is online money. How to make, I'm not sure what the question is. You got to be a little more specific at this point. Um Hazma says, you put your email, but you didn't get the confirmation to finalize the subscription. I don't think you get a confirmation on my list. I think you just get access to it. Um, when you send emails at free or payment, if you send, there, sending email has a cost. Um, there are some free options. So if you go to milesbeckler.com, on the top navigation, there's how to start your list. I show you how to get going for free, um, but that's um, required. Um, Shankar, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. So Jeremiah Adams, do I think online domain authority is conditional based on social preconceived notions or how familiar the general public is with a specific piece of content? I think online domain authority is about backlinks. Uh, literally, it's about backlinks still in the eyes of Google. So um, the quality of backlinks matters drastically and having really good press, meaning links from INC, from Business Insider, from Entrepreneur.com, from Huffington Post, difficult to obtain links that you can't purchase. That's how you build authority quickly. Um, Cool. So David Phillipson, um, another email subscriber. Good to have you here, my man. You saw on one of my sites recommended that they have it done for you. Oh, I literally, I literally covered that. I might be going backwards. Uh, Justin, am I using automation like Zapier or IFTTT? Not at all, man. Like I hate Zapier. Zapier to me is like duct tape and zip ties. It's like, oh, my business can't work without this little zip tie holding it all together. And I literally if I'm about to work within platforms that require that, I'm like, these aren't the right ones because they can't handle the transaction volume that I want to get to, you know, 100,000 uh, customers per year type stuff. So like Samcart directly integrates with Thinkific. Perfect. No Zapier required. I think companies that, that are leveraging Zapier are just clearly using shortcuts and they're showing that they're not willing to do the work of building a real product that can stand on its own. Um, so no, I don't, I don't do much of that. Um, how's the productivity? Your website is not picking up traction. What steps should you take? What videos should you review? Uh, keyword research and SEO. But again, do a little self-analysis of have you published 100 blog posts or more? Have you been on 30 different podcasts or other blogs as guest posts? If not, you should not really expect to have traction. And that's probably normal. Um, Brandon Watson, question. You're about to jump in the world of affiliate marketing. Awesome. You've watched all of my videos. That is a remarkable feat. Are uh, you ready to get going? Um, any advice, start today, go to milesbeckler.com, click on how to start a blog and follow and get the thing built. Stop watching videos. Stop thinking about it. Do you will learn more from doing than you will from watching. And it's time to shift. As I said earlier, create more than you consume, sell more than you buy, earn more than you spend. Those are the keys to like a great life on every level. And it's time for you to create more than you consume at this point. Um, 
Kripali says how to assemble or design content. I have a video called how to write SEO content fast. Search that video, watch that video for sure. Um, Matt Ellis, what do I think of the MMO niche, specifically creating a blog or website around the niche? Uh, Matt, I think it's a difficult niche. It's not, not doable because that's what I'm doing, right? So, so like I've proved it's possible for a relative nobody who I had a lot of skills. I've been making money online for 13 plus years when I started publishing content in this space. I had made a million dollars online already before I started publishing content in this space. Um, but you need to know that you're going against competitors like me. I have a lot of free time. I have a lot of strategy. I have a lot of money to invest in uh, tools, teammates, um, and analysts and consultants, um, as does Russell Brunson and Frank Kern and all the other people in the make money online space. And those are your competitors. Now, with that said, Where's a little subset? Where's a little niche within that niche is the only way to make that work. I think getting really in that, that can work. It totally can work, but you just got to know that it's going to be a lot more competitive than fountain pens, right? Um, it's going to be more lucrative than fountain pens, but it's a lot more competitive, which means it might have a bigger payday, but it might take you longer to get to that payday. So having the right perspective is key. And I think that like, there's this whole world of like, sweat equity hustles that I think are wide open, um, flipping things, right? So making money online, like buying something from a thrift store and selling it on eBay or Amazon type thing. That world is going to be easier than how to make money online, right? It is how to make money online, but it's super specific and you can get down to demographics, right? So, um, like, how to make money online on the side for single dads uh, type thing. Uh, so there's there's other ways to kind of find the connection point to to where you rel you relate more to your audience than I would, right? Because like people watch my videos. Some people watch my videos. They're like, oh, he talks too fast. He's clearly a scammer. It's like, I'm not even selling anything. Um, so we humans judge books by covers. Um, whatever that is, it just is like, that's the truth of being a human. Um, so like who is going to look at me and be like, eh, he's not for me, but look at you and be like, yep, that's my guy. That's one of the ways to, to kind of think about it. Um, I hope that helps. Um, Arjun, any advice on starting a blog for diabetic foods and promoting food brands that help with diabetic reversal? So anything that has to do with like curing diseases, I would say is probably not a good idea. Um, you can look up, sorry, I just hit my mug on the mic. You can look up Google's YMYL or the Google Medic update that rolled out last year. That's why it's not a good idea. Uh, Salomon says, uh, Salama says, how many subs should you aim to have before offering products? One, um, this is the technical answer. What's the best way to develop discipline and consistency? Do the most important things first thing. That's it. So one of the smartest things I've ever done in my life is just when I wake up, I go get coffee, I come down and I work on the most important thing of the day first. So I just released my GST goal achievement system, fill out that map. Make sure you got your post-it notes, right? I know some of y'all are like, yep, I got my post-it notes because I'm updating my GST worksheet every day. What are those three things that you have to get done? Get those done. For me, it, it email, videos, blog. That's pretty much it. And then guest on other people's stuff. I don't do all of them every day, but those are the four things that move my business forward. So they move to the front. Um, for me, it came out of a place of like, I hated the life I was living, working for the man. So that's where I just found the motivation uh, to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and stay up till midnight. Um, not everybody finds that and that's okay. Um, awesome. Glad you caught that, Yesnia. So... Peer Support Academy. Um, Happy New Year to you as well. So Mailer Light, MailChimp, or Send them Blue. I would say none of them. Um, I would use AWeber or ConvertKit. Personally, I would use AWeber. And on my website, milesbeckler.com, if you go to the how to start your list, I'll show you exactly how to get everything set up. It's on the top navigation. You can get a thousand subscribers for free uh, and they have free landing pages, which I think are the two things that put them up, but not to mention their deliverability is the best in the industry. And what really puts... AWeber above ConvertKit is you get automations from day one. So you get the follow-up series on the free account and there's 
customer support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a US based support representative is available in chat. So if you're trying to queue up emails and if you're trying to work at 1130 at night, because that's the hour that you can work when the kids are asleep and that's when you can focus. If you get stuck on something, they're there to help you. And that alone is worth more than anything because no, no one has better support in the world of email marketing than AWeber, period. So Phil M, can I talk about my link strategy in the case study that I did? Uh, maybe even show the charts in Ahrefs. So I don't have Ahrefs and I don't use Ahrefs. Um, I bought backlinks from reachcreator.com. That's it. They were 2,500 bucks for 10. That's what I did. Uh, so that's just it. Uh, and it worked. Um, and now it doesn't, it maybe isn't working now. Uh, that site has gotten hit by the algorithm uh, change. So RJ from South Africa, happy to have you here, mate. Thanks for being here. Uh, why do I suggest not starting out with white hat? Why do I, say I don't think I've ever said those words, Rita. I'm not sure what you're asking, Rita, because um, I think most, I would say 95% of what I teach is squeaky clean white hat. Um, welcome to Tiffany's. Um, oh, nice. I got somebody just, just going at it. Um, you are gone from the channel. Sorry. I had to clean up some of the mess in there. So welcome to Tiffany's. Love my channel. Do I have any advice for home decor channels? Thank you. Yeah. Create lots of great home decor content. Like literally like, like do analysis, study what's working for other big channels, and then test that kind of content on your channel and see what works and look back through all your last videos and see what's worked best and do more of what's worked really, really well for you. Um, Ramon says, I'm just starting your journey. You don't know where to start. You would love to learn more. Uh, so my start with my affiliate marketing 2021 video for sure. Um, React beat general. Uh, what's the difference between blogs and blog posts? So blog is like the whole thing and the blog post is just one post. So uh, another way of saying it is a blog is the same as a website and a post is the same as an article. We're literally, it's semantics. It's just using different words for the same thing. Um, so Alex Robles says, one to one and a half percent of people who see your OTO buy. That is awesome. And then 10 to 30% take the bump and about 10% take the upsell. Focus on bumping those numbers up. Facebook ads, definitely start running Facebook ads. Work on your one-click upsell. Your one-click upsell should be 30%, not 10%. So you, you literally could double or more, maybe even triple the number of OTO sales by reworking that. If you're still in the membership, um, there is a script in the membership to follow. Test that one-click upsell. It could be the actual thing, right? It might not be enticing enough, that next best logical step. Um, but yeah, I think you're ready for Facebook ads for sure. Um, and more says, I don't have thousands for Facebook ads. You do have drive and passion. What could you do on a budget? Create content, blogging. You can start a blog with, um, you can start a blog literally with $95 and 40 cents investment, a uh, hundred bucks or less. And that gets you a year of hosting, install WordPress for free, use a free theme, follow the whole step-by-step -step on my site. And from there, it's just work, work, work. And you can hustle it up, sweat equity for sure. Um, so I'm just noticing real quick, we got 172 thumbs up. Can we get that over 200, 300, 200, man, 300, ooh, we, uh, 237 people on the live stream. It is the new year's live stream. I'm happy to be here with you. I hope you are ready and fired up to make 2021 your best year ever. I am for sure. Uh, Linda also agrees that TASS is amazing. I hear you on that. Uh, Dale, good to see you here, man. Um, Steel, you've got a 40... 40K page views on a blog without backlinks, but monetization is crap. Yep, figure out what your people want and help them get it. And it's the key. How much does that blog make? Oh, y'all are talking between each other. That's cool. So Vile Inspiration, love the name, by the way. How do I divide my time between SEO, email, product creation, paid ads, team management? Man, okay. So now you're in, this is literally the million dollar question. Um, I operate very haphazardly when it comes to like my daily schedule. So I move, I've been using this ritual of what are the three things, what are the three most important things for me to do in my business right now? Um, and I just do those three things in the morning, literally, because if I don't get them done by morning, by the time afternoon rolls around, I'm tired. I don't have any energy and I'm not willing to do something difficult, right? Cause my willpower tank has been drained. So I just front load it. Some people literally, they mark out 
every hour on their calendar. This hour, I'm working on this. This hour, I'm working on this. This hour, I'm working on this. As I'm doing a lot of these activities, I'm always thinking like, okay, what am I not required to do? What could a teammate do? And I'm paying attention to this. So sometimes it's um, creating a, I call them executive summary outlines of someone else's content. I'm like, ooh, this is really interesting. Here's a, a video course that seems really interesting. I'll have my VA give me an executive. So she'll go through it and give me an executive summary outline. It's not like I think it's worth um, spending six hours going through their course, but is it worth paying my VA six hours to summarize that course and to give me a one page on it? Yes, it is for me. So it's those types of things is like, okay, where am I repeating, doing repetitive processes? Where am I doing repetitive things? Another solution or another thing here is, um, so I send a lot of emails. People click reply to the emails. I was dealing with those in my inbox. So that became something like, okay, I need to figure out a solution here. And I got started on Freshdesk. And now my, my virtual assistant logs in and monitors all of those emails instead of them coming to me because it was wasting my time. And my time was more valuable making another video or making another blog post. So for me, it's very, very, very haphazard to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but I love having the freedom to work on what I'm inspired to do. So every day I wake up, I make coffee. I listen to 20 minutes of um, positive and uplifting and inspirational content while I'm going through my coffee, while, while I'm making my coffee. And then I come downstairs here in this kind of basement where my office is. And I'm like, all right, what's the most important thing for me to do today? And this morning was um, email my list to let my list know about this live broadcast. It was, do we hit 200 thumbs up? High five, y'all. That's awesome. Uh, so it was email my list. And then it was to go into my membership uh, program where my private forums and it was to answer questions in the private forums. And now it's this live broadcast. And from here, I'm pretty much done. I'll probably think I'll do some reading later. Uh, I read every afternoon and evening because I'm kind of tired and lethargic. So it's good to read. Um, Got to split firewood and get all, you know, stuff ready there. But I'm, I'm thinking about like, okay, what can, what projects can my team push forward? And that's what I do in the afternoons is thinking about that kind of stuff. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, I, I, that is the million dollar question though, for sure. Um, so Steele says, except ads, I really need a nice course about monetization. I think honestly, you need to just start testing things and see what works, Steele. You're going to learn more from testing and doing things. Um, ultimately, I think that's the fastest way to really get to where you want to be. Um, Adam, welcome to the stream, says, uh, I'm learning through SBI. Should I also get the TASS or is one enough? One is absolutely enough. This is that discernment idea, right? It's like blinders on, blaze forward. Ken Evoy and the team at, at, at SBI is brilliant and they will help you get going in the right direction for sure. Um, different flavors to the same thing. Um, the TASS is much cleaner, much higher quality, much newer videos. The SBI interface is clunky. If you're like, I can't handle this clunky ass interface anymore, that's like the, the, re the one reason to change. But if you can get through their forums and the constantly opening subdomains and different tabs, which I've literally talked to Ken about uh, trying to help them resolve their, their user experience. Um, if you can handle that, the content inside of SBI is absolutely brilliant. Um, Survey NYC to start a membership site. Do I recommend WordPress or something like Wix, et cetera? WordPress, WordPress. I never recommend something like Wix, et cetera. It's always going to be WordPress. Self-hosted WordPress site, for sure. Um, Great answer. All right, Peter Jan, got it. Um, Peter, okay, cool. So you now are going to call yourself what I mistook your name as. I love it. Um, that's fantastic. I'm scrolling down to see where we're at in the comments. How far down are we? All right, Jeanette, this caught my eye, says, uh, success story. Hi, Miles. I put my blinders on finally in October, and I made $2.80 in November, $10.98 in December, and 39 bucks this month already. You've already made 12 bucks. That is awesome, Jeanette. So uh, I think I got the months and the numbers mixed up, but you're taking action. You put on the blinders, you're doing the work, and you're growing. I, I think that's just, it, it does work when we work it. And there's this long period in the middle of like, is this thing working? I don't know. Maybe I should go watch YouTube videos for six months instead of doing the work. That's the biggest trap in the world. And you clearly overcame that. Um, question, Google Annex 4, new version, thoughts? I haven't set it up yet. I haven't really focused on it much at all. Um, 
Money Lab, your 2021 theme is generosity and creativity. You want to be more generous with your time and push the limits of your creativity. If you do that, the money will work itself out. Um, for sure, Matt, and your videos, your creativity on that side, like your RO heavy metal song you're writing. Dude, you just keep doing you and, and the world will catch on for sure. You are ahead of the freaking curve. Um, Paul Hinkle, question. Writing 52 weeks of coaching autoresponder Starting with week one, how do you handle returning subscribers? I would never do a 52-week autoresponder personally, ever. Interestingly, I think Matt Giovaneschi, who's on this, Money Lab, I think he does that kind of approach. And my friend, um, my friends in New Zealand, my mates um, in New Zealand, they do a lot. I think she has a two-year um, so I think it's a 104 week thing. So um, I don't do that. My whole goal with email marketing is to get people onto my broadcast and I show up almost every day and broadcast. So um, what could you do with those subscribers? Make a broadcast tag and just send them broadcasts, right? Like, so you have the automation for a year going through and then you send people broadcasts because eventually when they get through the year, they're going to need something else. Um, but uh, one year coaching thing, they should be buying that, right? Like that does a paid product. And then if it is a paid product, is email delivery actually the best thing? I think not. I think there's other ways to potentially do that. Um, John, have I ever built sites solely around the idea of monetizing with ad traffic? No, I have not. Maybe low commercial intent, but large traffic numbers. I have not. Um, John Dykstra does that, but um, and it works for him. I know several other people who the what is M MFA made for AdSense websites, um, but it's not something I'm interested in. Um, Niv Niv, I am happy that you like my content. Um, what are my thoughts on income school guys? I see their names talked about. There's a subreddit I'm on. The subreddit seems to hate on those guys a lot. Um, I have never watched one of their videos, nor will I ever watch one of their videos because I'm too busy doing the work. Uh, if you're comparing their product versus the, the TASS I'm talking about, I would never even consider giving those guys a shot at all. Um, I, I just don't know anything about them. I don't know if they know what they're talking about or not. And such is life. Um, affiliate marketing versus having ads on the site or both. Feel free to do both. Test it. See what works best. Um, that was from Ben. Stanley Ivanov. Um, you're with $0 left and you're living with your folks. You bought a domain, but you're feeling discouraged. You can make this with no additional investments. Um, thanks for now. Yeah. So like a, go get a job, right? If you have $0, get a job. Then write in the evenings over and over. But ultimately, I mean, it needs to be perfectly clear, go get a job and then work your ass off nights, mornings, evenings for three years. And you might be able to replace your job income with the website income. Um, total therapy solutions, any recommendations for a physical therapist to compete with big authority sites, um, write a book and sell it on Amazon and Kindle is what I would say. Um, so survey NYC kind of followed up and says, you find WordPress complicated building businesses is complicated. Being an entrepreneur is complicated and it is, um, but it is the option I think is best. Um, you maybe you could leverage something like Thinkific, which is great. You could also hire somebody to help you pull it together. Um, I use Dave Wooding's help from Integrate Pro for all of my integrations and carts and and the layout of things. Um, he he's pretty awesome, um, but he's also seven hundred fifty bucks a month on Retainer. Maria G says, I have a 10 month old blog, thousands of viewers per month, but no sales, very few subscribers. Advice, um, more compelling content. Make sure your pop-up is super compelling. Test new lead magnets. They clearly don't want what you're offering. Have you tested um, seven different lead magnet options over the course of the last year? If not, that's what you should be doing is test, 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 test. Find what actually works. Um, Dino, you're from Eastern Europe. Can you put your server hosting location in America? Yeah, absolutely. No, it doesn't matter where you live. So it might be a tiny bit slower for you to update your website. But if your audience is in the US, um, it would be faster for your audience. And it's more important about what is up with your... your um, yeah, it's more important the experience for your users. Sorry to kind of trickle off my brain. So the next question, I like disappeared. So Survey NYC says, I want to start making $5,000 per month by June. Is this typically realistic or difficult realistic? Um, so are you already making two, 
thousand a month or three thousand a month, like like if you're not making anything, there's no way. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna literally be and like I'm gonna be that guy and be like, nope, ain't happening. Um, and and feel free to prove me wrong. I would love it if you did that. So my last website I built, um, it took me 14 months to get to that amount of income. 14 or 15 months. Now, keep in mind, I've been making money online now for 18 years. I've been full-time online now for 11 years and it still took me 18 months. I had a team of people. I was I was I was very aggressive with this build. I bring a lot of skills to the table. Um I would also like to ask you, can you make $5,000 a month right now in a normal job? Right? So like if you're like, I need to make five grand a month, like, could you go get a job in your local area? I'm guessing you're in New York. Like, are you a $5,000 a month kind of person? Like, do you already bring that amount of value to the world? Like, do you know how to bring $5,000 a month in value to the world at large, right? And, and technically to earn $5,000, you need to be bringing 50,000 to $500,000 per month in value to the world. And that's, that's why it's difficult because we're not taught how to bring value to the world. Like in high school, college, like no one ever taught me how to deliver value to you. And the fact that I'm delivering so much value to so many people, tens of millions of people reach our content, my wife and my content from all of our different websites and web assets and YouTube channels and socials and all those things. Um, it's because of the amount of value we deliver to this huge amount of people, that's why we make millions of dollars online, right? So it's it's understanding how to communicate value, how to deliver value, how to get your valuable content showing up on search. There's 101 micro muscles and little um, learning curves that you're going to have to go through. And it just takes time. So could you be making that if you're brand new and you've never made money online before, could you make $5,000 a month in two or three years? I think that's in the doable range. I really do think that's possible for most people who are able to show up and grind and to show up every day and create content every day and to tune everything else out and go. Um, but if you think it's going to happen between here and there, uh, my biggest recommendation for you is to go get a job for sure. Absolutely. Get a good paying job, get the pressure off of yourself so you can pay for life and then start working on this stuff and building those skills on the side. What are my thoughts on the dollar a day Facebook ad strategy? That's kind of what I use at this point. Um, that was from Scott McRae. Uh, Kevin, you want to say thanks, uh, connected live from Nigeria, my man. That's awesome. I'm, I'm excited to have you here. Um, a Weber works with Thinkific for sure. Uh, absolutely peer peer support. I wanted to call you Peter peer support Academy. Uh, yeah. A Weber. Uh, and then just go check out that, that blog. Cause I show you how to set up the landing page. So you can get your opt-in going. And then I show you how to set up the actual, um, follow-up system. So it walks people through like a seven day follow-up sequence, and then it puts them on a broadcast segment, which is the right way to set it up. And I show for a Weber step-by-step how to do all that. Um, Kevin Soji, do I still think ClickFunnels is a no, no for use as a beginner and for affiliate marketing purposes? It, it's just like, it's bringing a cannon to a knife fight. Like a it's buggy as F, but like, it doesn't offer you any advantage, like for 97 bucks a month or $297 a month. Like, Oh my God. Like when you can build an affiliate site and host your own funnels for like three bucks a month. Like I just, it's just pointless to waste money is my thought. And it is a waste of money in that sense. Now for, I used this example before of the, the lawyer who makes the solicitor who makes $400 an hour and they're booked out forever and ever. Um, like, like for them to save a couple of hours or to save like two hours a month, is it worth it? Maybe, but like, are you made of gold? Are you minted? Uh, if not, then I would say no. Um, Uh, Cheesecake, I've sent a lot of affiliate links through um, a Weber. Just don't spam. Don't be don't be rude or annoying um, with how you promote affiliate links. So Talicia Dudley, how often should you post on YouTube for a newbie? So two schools of thought, and I'm going to give you both of them and let you kind of decide. So my approach is what I call the shotgun approach. and Or maybe the machine gun approach would probably be a better approach um, description of it. And I'm just like video, 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 video. So I did 120 videos in 120 consecutive days. And I'm like, what sticks, what works, what gets views, what doesn't get views. I wanted a lot of data quickly so I could see like, where is the, where's the niche? Where's the hole? Where's, where's, where's my place to wiggle in this make money online niche to really start to own a little slice of the pie. Um, 
people like Daryl Eves, who is like YouTube teacher extraordinaire. He runs the VidCon Summit. Um, he says like one video a week, like bust out the sniper rifle and make one incredibly good piece of content every week. And that's like the best approach. So like I do no editing. I do everything in one take. I don't like editing. I never will like editing. So for my take, for my style, like turn it on and go at this point, I'm doing one video a week because I've got 600 and something videos on the channel. I've said most of what needs to be said on the channel. Um, if you've noticed in this live stream, I've referenced my SEO, how to write SEO content video, my SEO video, my DIY sales funnel video series, like my keyword research videos, like all of that's out there. And it's like, it says what needs to be said. Um, so I did a video a day every day for 120 days. And then I did three videos a week, every week for three years. And then I switched down to one video per week. So now I have a ton of momentum and channel authority, but my channel is growing slower now than it was when I was publishing more for sure. I have data on this. Um, Roberto Blake's really smart. Follow him on Twitter, engage with him on Twitter. If you're on Twitter and follow me on Twitter as well. If you're on Twitter, I'm at miles Becker. Um, I, that's where I'm like a real person instead of like a marketing robot. Um, and yeah, like, like he, he seems to be leaning towards lots of content as well. I think YouTube wants lots of new content because it gives people lots of reasons to come back and it gives them lots of new videos to show ads through. Um, but, but you could find a really smart person who's doing really well saying both sides. So what works for you and your style? Do you love editing? Do you love making B roll and like putting together these really create and then like layering an audio and just making really nice movies? Uh, or are you, here's an idea. I'm going to teach you how to get that thing done that you're looking to get done. Boom. I'm in, I'm out, I'm done. Like that's my style is, is in, out and done. Um, so I think figure out one way to go. Um, Niv Niv, can I recommend a course on how to do Facebook ads? Um, socialadclass.com for sure. Uh, I'm on. So check out my affiliate marketing 2021 video for sure. Commit. Any thoughts on how to price an ebook to be sold on a blog? It'll be your first digital product. So pricing is an interesting question. Like, like how valuable is the result that they're going to get? If they read your ebook, are they going to be able to know how to save $5,000 on buying a new car? And instead of spending $35,000, they're going to get 30 and they're going to save five grand. If you're about to help me save five grand with your ebook, I'll pay 300 bucks for it. I'll pay a hundred bucks for it. I'll pay 500 bucks for it. Um, is it a smaller lifestyle change? Is it, you know, so like, what is, what is the transformation worth to your audience? And ultimately, um, it's really good to do price testing. You know, uh, you can start at 17, you could literally sell it at 17, 27, 47. You can price test to see where you get the best conversion rate and know that the copy around the justification for the price is more important than the price. The sales copy on the page, the video sales letter that you write drastically more important than the price itself. Um, Gene Grant started a site six months ago, 30 articles, getting like 10 page views a day. That's awesome. Um, is it normally that slow? Mm, yeah. I mean, that's like, I, I think you're doing great. Um, 30 articles in six months is like nothing though. Like, let's be real. Uh, so like 30 articles in a month times six months means you, you could have at an article a day path, you could have 180 articles right now. And so that would mean six X. So if you six X what you did and you six X your result, you know, like, so, so you're not going all that fast. Like, let's just be real. Um, I don't do any one-on-one -on -one consulting yet. I will probably be starting it up. It's going to be probably 500 to $700 an hour is my consulting rate. Um, yeah, but I think just keep going like this is, and be sure you've seen my affiliate marketing 2021 video. I talk about the chasm of death, which is where you're at is when you're doing all the work, it doesn't feel like anything's happening. This is when most people quit. And that's why there's room at the top. Um, J Y H miles. What is my reach goal for 2021 to work four hours per week or less? and still, and, and still maintain my, my income and still maintain everything, um, to go to Banff and camp up at Banff. I hope Canada allows us Americans across the border at some point. Um, and to do, to do multiple week long plus camping trips in my, in my camping rig. Um, so for me, my reach goals and my goals are, uh, very much about time at this point in time, like more money is not offering me significantly more like, 
I live on a lake. I, I can go buy a boat. So I'm probably just going to go buy a boat this year and I could buy a side by side um, and put tracks on it. And I just bought decked myself out with, with, I, I can go buy snowmobiles if I wanted. Like, like it's just money is not um, fulfilling after a certain point. And I think that's really important for people to realize is when, when we don't have enough money, we think that money is, is everything. So it's like, we sometimes will we'll just, just amp up that treadmill to get more money, to get more money. This is why I'm so big on saving and learning how to invest and understanding how to um, generate this much money to live on this much money and to take that extra and to put it in things that can pay us forever. Uh, because then that opens up this freedom of it's like, well, I don't know, maybe I don't want to work a ton. So for me, four hours a week would be uh, four emails a week, one video, and maybe a blog post every single week is like my work for the week. And can I do that all in four work, four weeks, I, four hours? I think I might be able to. So that, that would be it. Um, and Yesnia, hit that like button, y'all. I agree. Let's hit that like button. I'd love to see more likes than people on the stream. We got 240 on the stream, 216. I know some people come and go on the stream. Those of you who have been with me for a while on the stream, I appreciate you. Um, I like seeing you guys here and I can see the numbers just starting to go. That's awesome. Um, Khalifa, any advice for someone that has a podcast? Yeah, follow Jay Klaus um, and, and listen to what he's doing on the Creative Elements podcast. And I've got an episode with him. So if you go to milesbeckler.com slash podcasts, plural, uh, you'll see all the podcasts I've been a guest on. Um, I link to his course, but you'll see his podcast. And, and Jay Klaus is with the Creative Elements podcast is one of the best in the game right now. Uh, Mr. Husky, do I only work on one side at a time? Yes. One project at a time, one thing at a time, one skill at a time is where I'm at. So when this YouTube channel was my project to get competence on YouTube, I did nothing but YouTube. I didn't, I didn't blog. I didn't social. I didn't share my videos. I did nothing but YouTube because I want to get YouTube working for me, right? Like these 233 people. Oh man, we are so close to getting the thumbs up over the number of viewers. That's awesome. I appreciate each one of you on that. Um, so right now, YouTube is working for me, right? So these 236 people, a lot of y'all came in from notifications and from my email, but a lot of people are seeing me just pop up on here and me just show up on their feed, me just showing up in their app. And they're like, oh, what's going on with this Miles guy? What's Miles talking about live? And they pop onto the chat right now, which is why I'm still here after an hour 23 and I'm going to be sticking around for a little while. It literally is because it kind of puts that position that where YouTube is working for me and I don't get, so I call it escape velocity. If you think about a rocket ship that's trying to leave the atmosphere, right? It takes so much energy to get it going three miles an hour, five miles an hour, 30 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. But at some point, once it's out of the earth's gravitational field, it takes such little amount of energy for that rocket to carry on. You know, like this is how we send, uh, like, I don't know what they are, telescopes or research vessels to the depths of space, right? They're not like continuing with the same amount of horsepower energy, if you will, once they're past the moon. They're like it's just going. It's just 17,000 miles an hour just keeps going at that rate. Business and, and online platforms work in a very similar way. And so what happens is somebody who's trying to get going on YouTube and a blog and Facebook ads and TikTok and Instagram and and, and because Gary Vaynerchuk said they had to be everywhere. None of their rockets are going to reach escape velocity. And all of those rockets are going to come crashing back down to earth. And they're going to get consumed with overwhelm is, is essentially what, what usually happens. Um, so like thinking of it through that lens, all in on one project at one time. And you'll find at a certain point, um, what you'll essentially do is you'll get to this point where you feel confident, competent, and you have free time left. So what I mean by that is when I was making my videos, the first videos I made, it, it consumed me. What am I gonna write it about? And then uploading it and then writing a, a title and making a thumbnail. Like it took four, six hours plus per video. Now that, that amount of time is compressed. It feels easier. It doesn't use as much emotional or mental energy. So at the end of my day, it's not the end of the day, but, but when I'm done with my YouTube video for the week now or whatever it is, I'm like, oh, I got free time left. What do I want to work on now? And when you get to that point where blog number one, traffic's coming in, you've optimized, you put up your posts, you, you've got 150 posts, you're doing three posts per week, you've got your systems dialed, your processes are dialed, and you still have breathing room at the end of the week, and you still got Saturday and Sunday, you're like, man, I'm ready to do more. That's when you start thinking about adding on something there. 
Um, welcome to Tiffany's threw in a $10 chat. I appreciate that for the super chat. Uh, happy new year to you as well. What's the name of my self hosting video? So there's two. Um, one of them is how to build a self hosted blog. Now that's on my website at milesbeckler.com up on the top navigation. You'll find a, how to start a blog link on the top navigation, and that'll show you how to build a WordPress blog. Now, if you want to build a funnel, like a ClickFunnels alternative, you will go search for DIY sales funnel. And obviously you can put my name in on it as well. And that shows you how to not just build the blog, but how to build a blog, an opt-in page, a sales page, how to deliver products all the way down the whole process there. Um, thank you again for the super chat. I do appreciate that. So Brandon Watson says, you watched my video about affiliate marketing 2021 and all the videos like that. You got any, you're ready to jump in. Got any advice to you as a 18 year old rookie? Uh, start today and don't let up. Like literally, if it takes you 10 years to figure this out and to become super successful online, you will be 28 years of age and you will be super successful online. And you will have 100% control over your time, over your location and over your financial situation. Um, this game that I'm playing that you're watching that you're thinking about entering in has the potential for you to retire your parents has potential for you to do really, really big things in this world. It takes longer than you want. And as an 18 year old, you are naturally more impatient than I am in my thirties, right? That that's just a way of the world. You'll, you'll understand that more later in life. Um, but just stick with it and find something that you're like excited enough about to go all in and write about and talk about and be about for the next three to five years. That makes everything much easier when you're really, truly passionate about something. Um, Esports, gaming are going to just continue to explode in their growth, which means there's a whole lot of hardware that's around that, but there's also software and then there's also tutorials, um, massive growth in so many of these areas. Just try to think a little bit, put on your, your futurist hat a little bit and, and understand kind of like you're growing up in an all digital um, era. So like for you, a cryptocurrency wallet on a cell phone and moving around ETH to engage with dApps might be more obvious and logical than it would be for a baby boomer. Um, so there's these arbitrages in what might be simple and native for you to what is more difficult and challenging to a boomer. And when you find those things, um, and I think gaming is one of them, right? And, and how to game. So in the, in the how to game world, you've got people who make $300,000 a year. They're software engineers. They get home, they want to play Fortnite and they suck and they're losing. And are they willing to pay 50 bucks a month or 99 bucks a month to get tutorials and videos in a membership area to help them learn how to dominate at Fortnite? So when they do play, they're actually competitive. You're damn right. They pay money for that sort of stuff. So these kinds of thoughts, um, but you might be like, ah, cryptocurrency is stupid. Great. Fine. Uh, gaming stupid. Great. Fine. What is your thing? It could be hand lettering because in all of this, within this digital world, we have a reversion to the old school that's also happening. And there's a lot of um, artisan stuff that, that's coming up and, and homesteading is, is re-emerging as something that's very popular. Um, so it's like, what, do you, what, what, what captures you to where for the next three to five years, you're, you're playing in a space that is enjoyable. You, I, I, I read about... <clears throat> I read a ton about what we, what we're about. My wife with her niche, like she, she reads, she listens like five, six hours a day of content, you know, literally 30, 40 hours a week of just really immersing herself in her world. She loves every minute is not work at all because the niche is something she loves. Um, so that's kind of important to keep in mind. I think jump head newbies go to miles's blog. He has step-by-step -step guides for both things. Um, you know, I appreciate that Jum. Um, I'm not the best writer in the world. I don't even write everything myself. I, I have my team write a bunch of stuff. Um, I want to put out tutorials. I want you to have step-by-steps for figuring out things. You don't need my puffery and my eloquent prose. I don't need to like puff myself up and make myself feel cool in your presence. I'm good. I live where I want to live. I've got, I've got the lifestyle I want to live and I got plenty of funds to sustain this lifestyle for decades to come. And it's about to be an infinite 
perpetuation of this. What I do need is for more people to earn enough to keep our society working because obviously local businesses, retail, but like I want to be able to go road trip into a city and have it be a thriving city with some cool coffee shops and some cool restaurants to where it's a fun, engageable, small town experience for me. I don't want it to be a scenario where everything's all boarded up because our economy collapsed. And I think grassroots, small, um, business builders like us can become these economic engines for those kinds of communities. Um, <clears throat> yep. So it's sins V2, um, pretty much just answer that to someone else. So uh, I hope that that makes sense. Um, Peter Jen, uh, technical question. Are you and Melanie's blog on the same hosting package as subdomains? No. Th so they're separate. So they're separate hosting accounts on the same server. I, I have a dedicated server. And so I can, I have a, uh, like I have an interface that allows me to go create separate um, hosted accounts on my own server. Uh, so they're, they're essentially separate hosting accounts, even though I just own the whole server that they're on. Um, I think natural remedy could be a challenging niche because it by definition puts you in conjunction with what's called the eat and the Google medic problem. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Zachary. Hey miles. Are you gonna make more personal finance videos in the future? Uh, the two I have are great, but then I stopped. I think I am. I think it's, I think it's really important for people to understand. Um, I think a lot of people have a false belief about how much money it would take or how big of a business it would take to like be done, like literally done from the financial game, uh, like that F you money phase. Like it really doesn't require that much. And what's interesting, so when I was um, when I was younger, I was doing real estate investing. And to do that in Albuquerque, I was living in the dorms at University of New Mexico. Again, I was just like, I'm gonna become an investor and I learned everything I could, networking. And I was sitting down with this one investor and I'll never forget it. He was like, Miles, you know, he was doing big developments, um, like little subdivisions, but not not houses like uh, condos and townhomes, really cool artsy stuff. I'd say like 30 townhomes to a 50 unit building down on um, on Central in, in Albuquerque, which is right by the university, really, really expensive, dense area. And he's like, you know, Miles, I don't want to live $100,000 of your lifestyle. Like the lifestyle I want to live it's $300,000 or more. So I have to do things to make sure I make the kind of money I need to pay for the lifestyle I want to live. Cause I want to have a ski house up at Taos. I want the cars I have. I want these things. I want to live in the Tanawan neighborhood. I want these things. And that just comes with the price tag. So I do what's required to earn enough to make that amazing. So that did two things to me. Number one, it was like, damn, like I'd never thought that big period. I had literally never thought like, I had a choice to want to earn $300,000 a year, like, and to live a $300,000 a year lifestyle. I was like, wow, that's, what, what could that buy? That's remarkable, um, especially in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But then the other side of that thought was like, I could just choose to live any way I want. And if I choose to live frugally, I don't need that much. So my wife and I kept a very frugal lifestyle. We still have a pretty frugal lifestyle at this point. Um, especially compared to how much we're earning, but we kept a pretty frugal lifestyle because it just kept that bar really low of like, man, I only need X amount of dollars to be really clear to, to make what I want. Now I'm driven by helping small businesses grow and to save this kind of what I've, you've heard me say it three or four times on the stream. So like I'm driven by other reasons that aren't financial, which is why there's no ads on this, which is why I'm not pitching you a product over and over and over like all the other D-bags who are just, I don't know, like caught by greed, uh, made terrible decisions and have ass tons of debt. I don't know what drives some of these weird people who have an insatiable, th it's greed and, and it's it's despicable. And a lot of them are like religious. It's, we it's so weird to me. Um, now, through that same lens, there's a lot of studies that say after $70,000 a year, like the amount of enjoyment that comes from the money goes down drastically. And if you look at people who are, who make like billionaires, boy, the divorce rates of billionaires. And there's a lot of people like, oh, billionaire in the making club. And it's like, do you know what that leads to? Like you can look at the data and see that that might not be a good thing. 
especially when you realize that the amount of bullshit you have to deal with to get to that point, it doesn't bring more happiness. 70 grand a year is about the happiness threshold. Now, if you live in San Francisco, I get it, but that's a choice. If you work free, you can go live at Tahoe for a lot cheaper than San Francisco. And I'll say a much better life as someone who lived on the North shore for four years, much better life living on playing the, the Tahoe game. Um, also, you could be tax-free living in Incline Village, which would save you 10% compared to paying California taxes because you have that freedom at that point in time. So let's say 70 grand is what you need to earn in order to be truly happy. And from that point on, it doesn't make much more. So let's say you pay 35% tax. So you need to make about 110 grand a year. Yeah, you need to make eight, nine grand a month, 10 grand a month. Like that ain't that tough. And when, when the bar is there, oh my gosh, as long as we're really smart and if you, we live frugally, so we then get, to phase one of 10 grand a month, which is literally, so we're earning 10 grand a month doing these active things, right? I'm, I'm hustling up WordPress work. I'm hustling up SEO work. I'm hustling up my affiliate sites. I'm hustling up courses and advertisements to earn my 10 grand a month. But then if I live on four grand a month, I've got a net of six grand a month. Okay. So after taxes, let's say um, five grand a month. So I invest that. Now, if I can grow this investment to the point where the investment generates 10 grand a month, I can stop doing the active things and I can live off of my nest egg forever. And, and that's, that is a paradigm shift. I think Matt Giovaneschi um, with moneylab.co, uh, he's reminded me recently, he has a post that's like the ultimate guide to lifestyle business or something like that, that really got me thinking about this more importantly, because I think it's um, really, really powerful to think about these kinds of thoughts because so many people are chasing down an undefined goal. They don't know where they're going. And so, uh, that was a very long answer to say, yes, more personal finance videos. Um, all right, so I'm going to jump down to the most recent stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse the order a little bit because I'm noticing a lot of people are asking a ton of questions and they're repeating themselves. Um, so Alec Littlejohn, when writing blog posts, is it bad to use similar content for multiple blogs on your website? For example, dog beds, German, dog beds for Huskies. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So if you're repeating yourself, if you have duplicate content, that's absolutely a problem. So A, make sure you're making very, very focused decisions. There's a way to do it right. But like, are you doing e-commerce content with that? And I, I think you're being, um, I think you're using a hypothetical example in this. So what I normally do is I just go Google um, dog beds for German shepherds, dog beds for huskies. And then I go monitor the results on the two. And are they mostly the same? Is it actually best dog beds is ranking for both? If so, Google's showing you that you just need one post to cover both of them, right? So don't, don't go down that path of repeating yourself because maybe best dog bed, best dog bowl, best dog collar, that's maybe a better strategy for you. Uh, try to get Google. But if you go search best dog bed German Shepherd, best dog bed Husky, and they're totally different posts, the Google results are 100% different do you see the same brands, the same URLs showing separate posts? If so, Google's kind of saying you can execute that strategy. So ultimately, the, like try to get Google to show you what is the right answer in that scenario. Um, um, are people, so Survey NYC, are people like Richard Branson considered real business folks compared to what we're covering here? Um, I think I'm a real business folk. I think Richard Branson's also a business folk. Um, do I recommend Facebook ads to promote your Shopify store? Niv, niv. If you have great copy and you're proving that you have a sales mechanism that works, absolutely Facebook ads is going to flood you with more customers. If you don't have a proven sales mechanism and if you don't have sales copy that converts, then Facebook ads is going to run traffic to something that doesn't convert. Uh, the analogy I always use is, so think of a fire, right? Like a campfire is ultimately, or like a bonfire, the fire is the income. That's the sale. That's the conversion. So if you have a fire going, okay, if you have a mechanism that's converting, Facebook ads is an accelerant, like throwing gas on the fire is going to increase the fire. But if you do not have a fire going, right, you're not making sales because your copy sucks, your product suck. You're just trying to resell rubbish from Alibaba. From, like you're just selling crappy products that nobody wants. Like good Lord, our world does not need more polluted products, disposable products in the trash. Um, and if you're not making sales already, then pouring gas on a pile of sticks is just going to make a smelly pile of sticks. Um, 
So Ned TV, what about the medic update? If you want to do a fitness website, I think fitness you're, you're safe. I think the medic update and the same ideas is rolling out to every single niche right now. So just know that you're going to have to build your expertise, your authority, and your trustworthiness, no matter what you go into. Um, HJL, this live stream is going to be uh, replayed afterwards. Easy peasy. Um, Cindy Womack will be retiring in two years. Awesome. And you want to have passive income established. Awesome. Um, you know nothing about online business. Cindy, I really hope you're still on the live stream. Uh, great question. First of all, congratulations. So two years to retirement means you've put in dozens of years of hard work. So I commend you in whatever field you've been doing that in great work. And thank you for whatever you've been doing. Um, I think you have an opportunity right now with a two year window to build something really fun for retirement. And, and I would think of it as, so a, the, the short answer is affiliate marketing is the best way to start. And an even shorter answer is start a blog. Okay. Um, and a blog to affiliate marketing, and it can go in a million and one directions. You grow an audience of people who come to know you, like you, and trust you for a topic, for something. So that something is your niche, is what people like to use that phrase. So I've got videos on my channel. Um, you can search in YouTube, Miles Beckler, how to choose a niche. You'll find my free video series on that. Um, Miles Beckler, affiliate marketing. You'll find my free affiliate marketing 2021 video. So the technical bits and bobs of this, you'll find them. They're on my channel, free, no ads. Um, what you, what I think is most important to do is, is try to think in the future, like when you retire, what are you going to do? Are you going to be gardening? Is that like, so you're going to free up all of this time. And what do you want to do with all of this time? Like gardening, quilting, knitting, um, games, crocheting, scrapbooking, art, poor painting, um, calligraphy, uh, to go back to my fountain pen idea again. And when you realize that odds are in retirement, I'm going to spend five years, 10 years, the rest of my life in the garden. Rose garden, maybe, maybe, um, I don't know, hydrangeas are just, you just love, and you're like, you're just going to become the hydrangea lady type thing. Am I pronouncing that right? I think they're the big ball flower things. Um, that's what I would talk about because then you put yourself in a position where the next two years you're learning the skills, um, of how to publish, how to keyword research, how to do the bits and pieces, right? Like the technical stuff. But by the end of two years, the technical stuff is second nature. And I'll be honest by the end of six months, three months to six months for most people. The technical stuff is easy and it's just kind of doing the work. But then you're in a position to where the rest of your life is experimenting with new things, trying new flower potting things or whatever it is. And then you write a blog post about it and you share it with your audience and they love it and you love it and you build a community around it. And it can be a really fun way to enjoy retired years. Um, my dad retired uh, six years ago and he never, he never, found a new hobby. He got back into bowling. Uh, so I take that back. He got back into bowling. My family, I grew up in a bowling alley. We bowl a bunch. Um, and he's bowling when the bowling alley is open, uh, three, four times a week, um, carrying about a 190 average. So go pops. He's kicking ass. Um, but it took years for him to find, refine that passion. And you have a potential to come out with a passion that has a potential of generating income, which can open you up to a lot of freedom in that life. And then also you have the ability to write off a lot of the expenses in that world as well. So, um, let's say you buy a greenhouse, you write a review on the greenhouse, you use the greenhouse to keep blogging through the winters. Perfect. You can literally write off the expense of the greenhouse if it is a tool for business in that, in that circumstance. Um, so I hope that was, was like, I would just, I would really think about what would be fun, what area gardening, cooking, what is that thing that would be fun for you to read about, write about, talk about, and be about from retirement on, and then commit to that area? So, Servi and NYC, um, the alternatives to click funnels is my DIY sales funnel video series, which is also a blog post. So, just search Miles Beckler DIY sales funnel, and you'll find um, everything there. Um, You see, I use the Shibli theme. I don't really use the Shibli theme. I'm on Thrive themes on my website. Wow, four hours a week. Um, can I really keep myself to? Yeah. So, like, that's that's the question, right? And that's that's why it's a stretch goal. Um, So Goran says, yesterday you enabled your join button on your YouTube channel. I don't even know what that is. Do I think it's a good move? I don't know what that is. You have 24,000 subscribers. Good for you, Goran. 
Um, what's the best way to promote that? Make a video talking about it, but I don't know what that is. Domain Monitor says, how often should you update blog posts? You've started writing content. You have 47 posts, one a day. Good work. Should you wait three months and then loop back to the first post and update? So I like to look in search console and look to see when your posts are getting um, lots of impressions and clicks. And that's when I go back to re-improve them, right? So I do a lot of work and then I look at what's getting picked up by the search engines and then I go improve what's getting picked up in search. So Luis says, you were on the merge to pay and close a program, um, but you stopped after seeing some of my videos. Where would the best place that you can start? It, it depends, Luis. What, what do you want to do, right? Like, what, what is your goal? So there's um, more video content on YouTube in the business and marketing world than a human could ever watch in their life. So you need to be very specific about what are you trying to figure out? So if you want to start an affiliate marketing site and a blog, go watch my affiliate marketing 2021 video and then go to milesbecker.com and click on that how to start a blog and start a blog. If you need to figure out what your niche is, watch my how to choose a niche video and then start your blog. But the key is to start, right? You got to start publishing somewhere, some way. Um, Dale says, do I recommend any keyword tool for in investigating the sub niche? I have a whole video series on that, Dale. Search for Miles Beckler, comma, um, how to choose a niche and watch the two-part video series there. Um, thoughts on FBA different than affiliate. Yeah, it's very different. I mean, I don't do FBA. I don't like, I don't like contributing to our culture of consumerism and our culture of disposable products. And that seems to be what everyone is doing on FBA. Very few people selling on Amazon are creating high quality, handcrafted, gonna last forever types products. They're getting rubbish made in China that's polluting the oceans, that's polluting the airs because it's all plastic and it's all polyurethane and it's all coming from oil essentially, right? And it's just, it's a disgusting business model. Whereas there's this whole world of people trying to improve their lives through fitness, through investing, through more enjoyment, through gaming and playing. And all of those people are looking for guides, helpful guides. And that's where the world of affiliate marketing is. That's why I prefer affiliate marketing. Um, would I recommend being an affiliate for ClickFunnels? Uh, like, no, like, especially if you're not doing really well with ClickFunnels and you don't have anything to help. Like it's just, that's like worse than an MLM to just um, promote something because promote something. Um, Brandon says, thank you, Miles. After this live stream, I'm going to start. I came from a poor background, trying to be the one who changes and helps your family. Um, that's awesome. So, I mean, I grew up in a working class, poor family. I went to a school, like I lived in this, my parents rented in this little neighborhood next to a couple of very wealthy subdivisions. So all my friends lived in these fancy, fancy subdivisions. And I always had this like feeling like what their families did was different than what my family did. Uh, and it came down to two things for me. Um, one was businesses. They own their own businesses. And two was real estate. They own real estate. And those are the two things my family didn't really do at all. Um, so that's what I did. And uh, it's a long path. It's a confusing path, but it's, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done in, in my life. Um, so Luis Gerardo says, how does Google Search Console look when you start ranking? What metrics do you check? So when you load Google Search Console on the left, there's a performance tab, click performance, and you're looking for impressions. Impressions happen first and then clicks. And that's really the two data points. Um, Solicitation, are you able to do one-on-one -on -one question and answer with me? Um, no, I don't. So like, I'm probably gonna start selling hourly consults. It'll be like five to $700 per hour. So if that's in your budget, uh, it is something I'll probably start doing, but I don't have that mechanism built right now. Um, Talicia says, you just started a YouTube channel to help new entrepreneurs build business credit. Thoughts on the niche? I think it's great. And I think um, it's, a, it's an entrance point, right? It's a wedge. Uh, so a niche, it's a sub niche. So it's a web into a greater space. It's a, it's an entrance point into a broader world. I think the whole credit repair world is huge, right? Um, when you get down to the consumers trying to repair their credit, because people want to buy houses, because as we've seen house prices keep going up 
And like those who get in on the housing game, that, that's what is one of the ways that people create wealth. Uh, and you got to have credit to play that housing game. So I think it, it's something that you can start with the business credit and you could potentially expand out from there. Um, for marketing success, there's more money in creating an online business that using marketing skills to promote others. Um, I'm not sure I catch that. Um, Jay Maverick, can I talk about TASS briefly? So uh, right now it's it's on special for a couple of days. My friends Mark and Gael have launched it. It's the most comprehensive step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to start an affiliate marketing site anywhere online. Um, they just built 160 new videos together um, to bring it. This is version 3.0. So if you bought version 1.0 years ago, like I did, you got this upgrade for free. There's nothing extra to pay, um, but they have a community and they just they just have the most structured system and the blueprints and they just give you all the bits and bobs on how to build an affiliate marketing site. It's on special for like two more days, uh, milesbeckler.com slash T-A-S-S. Uh, it's great. Um, oh, Doug Cunnington's on here. I kind of missed that. Um, Eric Williams, would I recommend ClickFunnels 100-day affiliate bootcamp to learn how to be an affiliate marketer? Absolutely not. All they're trying to do is to get you to promote them, okay? So it is a misaligned incentive. They're not teaching you how to be an affiliate marketer. They're teaching you how to be a shill for ClickFunnels, which doesn't help anyone but ClickFunnels, right? So it's essentially teaching you, it's like, a, I would call it more of a... Um, an unpaid internship where they get you to do their marketing work for them under the guise. Uh, it's like an MLM. It's worse than an MLM, um, to be honest with you. So no, just start with my affiliate marketing 2021 video and go from there. If you really want a course to follow, milesbeckler.com forward slash T-A-S-S is where I would go. Um, So Wanderlust Coffee Truck, if somebody is brand new to funnels, um, is it best to start with an all-in-one software before trying to piece together your own so you can understand how it all works? So the key is to break apart the components and what do you actually need right now? So if you think you need a funnel, do you have traffic? So you have traffic coming in already? Because if you don't have traffic coming in, why do you need a funnel? Are you really ready to invest thousands of dollars learning Facebook ads and testing Facebook ads? If so, maybe, but I think you would be better served to get inexpensive tech versus ClickFunnels and spend the extra money on the advertisements itself. So ClickFunnels pays 40% commissions. That, that's a part of their game. And they built it by trying to, you've seen multiple people. Should I just promote ClickFunnels as an affiliate? Should I promote? So there's this whole group of people who don't use ClickFunnels and they sell ClickFunnels as you got to have ClickFunnels, but they don't actually use ClickFunnels and they have no business outside of promoting ClickFunnels. That is disgusting. That is incestuous. It's horrible. And that's totally how ClickFunnels has grown. It's worked, but it's, it's all based around lies and greed. So what the truth of the matter is, is you need an audience of people who are looking to you for something and then you give them a free something. So if you have a big audience of people and you're ready to build a list, you can actually start building a list with AWeber and their landing pages for free. And then if you're like, cool, now I have a list and I'm ready to sell them a product, you could use Thinkific and they have a free level that gives you three courses you could sell for free. They don't take a percentage, that's it. Like you could literally build a list and build a business and make income selling your own courses at zero cost to you as an alternative to ClickFunnels. So if you search, I have a free ClickFunnels alternative video that goes deeper into that. Um, final question, what's your take on acquiring a business over starting from scratch? Um, do you have the skills needed to operate and grow an existing business? So I, as someone who's built many successful websites and businesses, I could buy a online business that has really good numbers and I could improve it. I could increase what that business is doing relatively effectively based on the skills I've been building since 2003 when I made my first money online. Do you have those skills, right? Marcus Lemonius, who's the prophet on CNBC, a uh, really good TV show. The reason he's able to go buy businesses and scale them is because he's built and run successful businesses. If you've never built and run a successful business before ever, I don't know. I, I would have to say it's a coin toss. You could F it all up and you could destroy it. And it could be a very expensive seminar and you could end up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to break something. Whereas you could just start something from scratch and break that. Because the truth of being an entrepreneur is that 
we just move forward and break shit all the time. And then we figure out how to fix it. And then we go break something else. We figure out how to fix it. We break something else and we figure out how to fix it. That's what entrepreneurship actually is. So trying to find a way around, like maybe if I do it this way, I won't have to fail, fix, fail, learn, you know, trial, error, trial, error, trial, error, trial, error. Maybe there's a shortcut. There's not. And if you jump it to an expensive approach, you're just literally putting the risk way higher than it needs to be, um, in my personal opinion. So Pablo, any idea on recouping from a massive traffic loss from the December core update after a year of creating articles and losing 50% of traffic in four days kind of makes you want to quit again. Um, and that's normal, man. Like, so I've been dealing with these kinds of updates since 2012, since the Penguin and Panda updates literally took out businesses. Um, I had one website that was more than 50% traffic was lost from it. So I'm engaged in how do I fix this myself? But um, I don't. So you could start another site. You can learn more about the EAT. And I would ask, I, I'm very curious, have you read Google's quality um, guidelines that they put out for their quality readers. Um, have you read the exact document that says exactly what Google's looking for when it comes to a blog? Because if you read that full 160 page document, odds are you're going to be like, Ooh, yeah, I'm not doing that. Ooh, yeah, I don't have that EAT metric and really understanding the EAT thing. Um, what is the best way to start a blog in an online community? I don't know. I, I just, I just partner with the search engine personally. Um, I'm starting a SaaS company. What do you recommend to start driving traffic to the site? I don't know. Where are your users? Um, SaaS could be business to business, which would be Instagram. SaaS could be business to consumer, which could be Facebook ads, uh, or Google SaaS could be, helping people learn the right hashtags on Instagram. So obviously focusing on Instagram would make sense. Um, so build an audience first and then offer the audience stuff to go purchase is my personal approach. Uh, my ATM video um, is the one for that. So Henry says, is 2021 the end of the drop shipper? I don't know. I've never drop shipped. I don't like drop shipping. I don't, I don't think it's a great business model for long-term um, businesses. So I, I really don't know. Uh, what's my opinion on YouTube ads? We're working on them aggressively on my end. Any advice on how to learn them? Test, 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 run them, go start spending 10, 20, 50, hundred dollars a day, run dozens and dozens of different types of creative and see what works, see what brings you revenue. Because if you're going to run YouTube ads, you, you have a conversion mechanism that's working, right? You're already making money with something, right? Because that's the only time you run ads on things unless you're testing. And if you're testing, then you know you're testing and all you should be doing is testing. So I hope that makes sense. It's like ads are not the solution. Ads are the accelerant. Crafting an offer that people want and sales copy and a sales process that converts people, that's what you got. That's the work. So once that's done, YouTube traffic, yep. Facebook traffic, yep. LinkedIn traffic, test it. Pinterest traffic, test it because your offer converts. And if you don't know that your offer converts yet, can you use YouTube ads to test offers? I personally wouldn't. I would use um, Facebook for that because it's easier to test on, I think. Lindsay B says, I spent a year on personal finance site with few results. Should I scrap and start another niche? I don't know. Um, you know, walking away from something that you've got years of work into is um, potentially risky. Um, it's a you know, you're starting back over at zero. It's a long path. Like I, I still think building a business online for most people is three to five years, period. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of posts, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. I started this channel off knowing that I was going to do, it's a long march to a thousand videos. I'm 637 in or something like that. So it's just, uh, it's just where I'm at. Um, yeah, so you bought the site, added lots of giveaways and posts, run ads and Pinterest. So I mean, was the site dying before you bought it? Did they run a bunch of spammy stuff to it? Um, there's a lot of unknowns in that question. Um, so Yesnia, for creating a course, I really like Thinkific, um, but I would ask if you're already using a shopping cart, what does your shopping cart directly integrate with? Teachable's great, Thinkific's great. I don't like Kajabi. Um, WordPress with LearnDash absolutely works. So what kind of, um, what plugs in natively with a shopping cart that you're already using? That's usually where I focus first because I don't want to have to zip tie things together with um, 
I don't want to have to like zip tie things together with with uh, zap or zap 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 zapper. Um, Jin Pang Zhu, hey Miles, how do you get over shiny object syndrome and staying focused on one task at a time? Unsubscribe from everybody who's selling you shiny objects, right? Every email that has some new thing you need to look at, unsubscribe. Um, stop going on YouTube completely. Um, stop going on social media completely. Ta-da! You can now focus. So uninstall YouTube app from your phone, uninstall Facebook from your phone, uninstall Instagram, uninstall TikTok, completely eliminate all of them. And then do the work. Just do the work. Be a professional. Do the work. Show up every day and do the work. Do the work. It is that simple. Like I'm not oversimplifying it. It literally is that simple. On this thing here, there is no Instagram app. There is no Facebook app. There are no notifications on. My email doesn't even notify me on this. Slack is the only thing I have uh, notifications on my phone. And that's because that's how my team notifies me if we have a problem. If one of my sites is down or if something's broken, that's the only mechanism they go in. That's the only thing that I allow. And my phone is on airplane mode 80% of my day, um, to be perfectly honest. So Tina says, oh, they're not allowing your comment. Interesting. Um, so Tina says, even though it's not displaying, I have over 50,000 YouTube subscribers, but your channel is for your direct sales paper crafting company. You make about $1,000 a month with AdSense. How can you make more? Um, sell more stuff? Offer people other things to buy? Create a course? Um, create a membership? Create a box of the month club? Um, but if you want to make more money with AdSense, it's all about more traffic, right? Just get more traffic, do more of what brought you traffic and, and grow your traffic. Um, when I mentioned, I don't like promoting products that are made of plastic. Does this mean that you don't promote any physical products and mainly focus on subscriptions or digital products in a broad sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm literally thinking right now, like books I promote, like, I don't know of many, um, so, so in, I have some videos of, um, like how to make a travel YouTube gear where I talk about like tripods and, and like lighting and stuff like that. Um, so that is a little bit of something I will, but generally, and I know all that stuff's made in China for sure. Um, which like, there's no getting away from that, right? Like our, our world has globalized in the sense that the, the strong dollar has forced manufacturing off to countries that have an arbitrage on the currency side of things. So like, there's no avoiding it, but I'm just not literally wanting to build my life on selling fidget spinners and things that are going to break um, and end up in a trash heap. And I know they came from a non-renewable resource. Um, so, yeah. So I do, I do focus on a lot of subscriptions and digital products, but it's, it's mainly because that's what my people want, right? So you're looking for me to help you grow your business online. So how do I help you grow your business online? Well, like there's just things that need to get done, like keyword research, web hosting, themes, email marketing. And like, that's just, that's just based on what my world is. Um, in other niches, the pen calligraphy type niche that I've talked about before, um, you're selling physical stuff. And this is a metal, this is a metal pen that is completely refillable, right? So this is theoretically, it's, yeah, it's a 20 something dollar pen, but it's a lifetime pen. It's a really freaking nice pen for 20 something dollars. Whereas my other friend that is the uh, Pilot G2, which I freaking love these things, but like, have you ever gone through a case of these things? Let's see what this one's at ink wise. Like I, I write a lot. Okay, so I'm pretty good on ink on this one, but like I write a lot of notes and I just was like, man, I feel like, and I bought the refills for them and I break them and I'm like, dude, these are plastic. These are just literally rubbish. This thing I could possibly have for 15 years. Like, oh, okay, maybe I should get into pens that I guess. And that's just, it's just, I'm, I'm now kind of preaching personal philosophy. If you want to use disposable everything, like that's, that's some people are cool with that, I guess. Um, Yesnia says, yes, I only listen to Miles and consume about eight hours of your niche content you're really passionate about from only trustworthy people. You listen while working your day job. So smart. And I think so many people could get a lot out of leveraging downtime through listening, commuting. Uh, Ma'am, so Melanie just cleaned the kitchen before we started. We did breakfast and she cleaned the whole kitchen. Looks amazing. Um, high five, wifey, if you're watching. And uh, she had earbuds in and she's listening to some content in her space. And so we're, we constantly put on headphones. And when I was kind of getting the set going with, so I kind of got this, I've made some changes, got some new crystals up here. 
uh, the lighting playing with all that. I had headphones and I was listening to content. So it's, it's like, um, you know, really working on, on those next level, um, how do I get twice as much value out of this time? So I got to walk the dog. Can't not walk the dog. Bad things happen if you don't walk the dog. So I'm going to walk the dog. Therefore, let me put in some audio and feed my brain with something positive, either niche related or super specific to this little marketing thing. But then anytime somebody starts pitching you shit, unsubscribe, walk away because you don't need to buy a bunch of stuff, right? There maybe is one key core course that you need to guide you, to shortcut you to learning what you would actually learn by doing anyways, but you're willing to invest to save 30, 60, 100 hours of trial and error. Perfect. Once you get that one course, all in blinders on. That's the key to everything. Um, Santiago, I don't remember the previous question, unfortunately, about the property management software company. I don't, I don't remember exactly what that was tied to. So Mark says, important question, Miles. How am I? I wish all the best for 2021. You appreciate everything I'm doing. I am freaking great, man. Like to be perfectly honest, um, I'm happy. I'm healthy. My family's happy. My family's healthy. We've had some COVID go through some family members and everybody bounced back from it. And, um, I'm good. I'm thinking a lot about like happiness. I just went through this book called um, Stumbling on Happiness. I listened to it on a long drive. It was it was a little too long. It was very academic, um, but it, it just looked at like what is happiness and what makes us actually happy. And a lot of things we think are going to make us happy. A lot of people go after the new iPhone, the new this. This is a two, this was a two hundred dollar phone. This thing ain't even worth one hundred and fifty bucks anymore, and it works fine because I know the next iPhone ain't going to make me happy. I know buying another house ain't going to make me happy. I've lived um, lifestyles that were flying in business class, flying across oceans, living in beach mansions, renting yachts, throwing exorbitant $10,000 per week um, rentals for friends, flying out private chefs. I've tried that like, like expensive look how wealthy, not even about looking, just enjoy that level of, of wealth uh, lifestyle. It wasn't that enjoyable. And I'm now I'm up on my property. I'm up on my timber property. Um, it's me in the trees. I have one neighbor within a quarter mile of me. I can go hike for miles on my property and I see no human beings. I don't hear any cars or honking or sirens or nothing. It's just me and my trees. And I freaking love it. And it's amazing. Um, and I have a big old honking house that I'm, I'm going to build a new studio. So this set eventually is going to go away because this is a fireplace. And I'm in my basement. It's a walkout basement. So there's like a guest room over here. And then there's this big empty room that's super echoey over there. Um, so I have to totally figure out how to get rid of the echo and carpet and maybe radiant floor heating. And so that's a project I'm going to take on and probably going to teach myself woodworking and the basics of carpentry and stuff soon. And just um, I'm out splitting firewood almost every day because I'm doing. Yeah, I just I'm just I'm happy. And thank you for asking. I do appreciate that. Um, so Cheesecake says, interestingly, China is leading in renewable energy and technologies. You know, they're great with um, hydroelectric power and whatnot, but, but there still is, if you look at and if you follow plastics back to their source, um, there, there is, an ex and plastics are extremely toxic to make. You can look at surfboards, paddle boards, like all of the toxic things that we consume and use in this world we're in come from China. And then a lot of, if you, if you track the recycling, like, well, okay, so we all recycle, right? You, you separate them out and you put them in the recycling bins. Like where does recycling go? It actually goes back to Asia. Um, a lot of it had been going to China. Some of it's getting denied and they're having to reroute it to places like Vietnam and, and Indonesia. But, but a lot of it, you know, like um, materials. So there's, there's a tiny bit of silver and gold inside every cell phone. So when these all get packaged up, they take them and burn them. Right. And like, so we just offshored a lot of our pollution is, is something that's true. Um, Jeanette says, I've got my AirPods in right now, listening as you clean your home. Get it, girl. I love it. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. Like we can, we can dual purpose these times and what, like there's just stuff that has to get done in life. So let's get that done in a way that allows us to grow. I, I got fascinated at some point. Um, I, my brain cannot get full. Like I can go through book after book after book. So my phone's off on purpose to, to keep all my bandwidth on the stream. So I was looking, my Audible tells me that I've got like 21 days of Audible listening. Like I've listened to 21 days worth of books and my brain's not full. Like, and there's still, and I can just, I can listen to another book and another book. And it's just, it's insane. Like, where does it go? Like, it doesn't go in my brain. It goes somewhere in the ether or something. Like, it's just phenomenal. It's amazing. And, and 
yeah. So I, I don't necessarily take a lot of time to sit and consume content. I don't watch YouTube videos at all, unless I'm trying to fix something super specific. And I'm like looking for a step-by-step -step video that's going to show me how to fix the dryer or something. Um, I, I just don't watch YouTube videos because it takes a hundred percent of my time. I will, if I find a YouTube video that I'm like, Ooh, this keynote speech looks good. I'll rip the MP3. I'll move it onto my phone and I'll listen to it while I'm doing something else. While I'm out in the garden, while I'm out splitting wood, while I'm out shoveling snow or whatever it is. How do I find content? I do research, uh, talk about my experience. So I look to really smart people and what they read and recommend. So I use Twitter in this way. I'm only following, I've been, I've been adding more people. I'm going to do a, I'm going to yank a bunch of people. I don't think I'm following hundred people on Twitter. So I'm actually following what, what a hundred people are saying. And I pay attention to what they're talking about, what podcasts they like, what they recommend, what they are on. And then when I listen to experts on podcasts, people always drop books and I'll, go look at books. And then I look at the reviews on the books, whether it's worth my time or not. I trust the, the reviews a lot. So I kind of threw like who in this world has created a result that I want to create. Um, and then who did they study to figure out what they want? Right. I don't want the bubble gum, their idea of it. So it's like somebody like, like miles teach me how to do copywriting. No, like I'm not that good of a copywriter. Go study Eugene Schwartz, go study John Caples, go study the greats who I recommend. I have a blog post if you want. Um, just Google Miles Beckler top 10 copywriting books. Like you need to study who I study. That's like people who study Russell Brunson. Russell Brunson is literally stealing and regurgitating Dan Kennedy's stuff, Frank Kern's stuff. Frank Kern is a complete clone of Jay Abraham. I go to the source, man. I want, I want, I want where it came from. I want the original, the Ogilvy stuff. And, and Frank Kern talks a lot about Ogilvy on advertising, but like um, if you if you look at what Russell Brunson does in the world as a very clear example, um, his one funnel away is it's a direct rip. Like he literally stole that headline and changed one word. Right. And like people who know know who originated that. And so he's got this whole like, you know, it's it's easy to fake. It's easy to fake out. uh a one, but you ain't gonna fake out a nine, right? Like people on the level know what's going on. It's all the noobs. It's just selling to the noobs is what's going on there. Um, so survey NYC, I wanna start something that will be profitable. You're 49, you don't want something to waste time allowed as a 20 something can afford to. There's no way around the learning curve. There, I don't know of a single entrepreneur who figured it out and got it right on the first time. It is a risk. Being an entrepreneur is risky. It is risking your time and it is risking capital and your energy. Um, if you're not willing to take those risks, go get a day job for sure, because that is a risk-free. You can get a day job and they will say for 40 hours of your life, every single week, we will pay you this many dollars. And it might be $30 an hour. It might be $170 an hour. It might be more, it might be less. I don't know you and your skill set, but if you need a guaranteed return result on the energy you put in, that's called being an employee right? If you're not willing to take on the risk, that's fine. We need employees. There needs to be people who clean bathrooms. There needs to be people who clean and cook in restaurants. And, and like, we need employees at every level. We need HR employees in big businesses. We need call center employees for when something wasn't shipped right. Go do that. And you will have a very, very consistent guaranteed amount of income. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, if you actually want to be an entrepreneur and create a lifestyle of true freedom, then, then you absolutely have to take on the risk and you have to move forward knowing that that project might not work. And, but you might learn something in that project that'll get you to that next one. And then, then what you learn in that next one, that one didn't quite work, but you learn something else. And then eventually you get enough of these little trial and errors, success emerges out of all of those little learnings. And that's the truth of how it all works. Um, so Demetria says, you know that I don't do Instagram, but you'd like my input. You manage and create a theme account with 170,000 followers, but you're not sure how you can monetize it correctly. It's in the guitar niche. So the first thing I would do, Demetrius, is I would, I would start running little surveys. Like, what can I make for you? What do you need help with? Figure out what they want and what they need help with, and then create content that gets them there. So Technically speaking, stories are going to be your mechanism for driving traffic, the swipe up feature in the stories. But you got to you got to understand, like, do they want guitar trainings? Do they want how to build guitar stuff? Do they want like what do they want to learn and then help them learn that? And a lot of times helping them learn that can be through affiliate links. So 114 Outdoors says I'm getting rid of all my flashy objects through an eBay store. Um, and never living an affluent lifestyle again. You're riding your bicycle across the country and blogging 114 days. There's your 2021. 
I freaking love it, man. So I have donated everything I've owned more than three times in my life. Um, I went full nomad multiple times and then I came back and was like, oh, I'm going to be, have a home base. And then I was full nomad and I actually just sold a house full. I literally sold a house completely furnished, uh, including some of my kick-ass huge amethyst crystals um, because it was an Airbnb. Uh, and just, it, it is the most freeing thing to get rid of all things, right? And to get down to like, okay, what is absolutely necessary for me to live a truly enjoyable life? And um, most people think more things lead us there. <clears throat> a lot of times when people get more things, more things, they realize, uh, Oh, that didn't bring more happiness. Um, you know, Frank Kern, really smart guy. Um, I just see him just buying all of his like Rolls Royces and he's now covering himself in tattoos and he's drinking a lot again. And he's kind of getting, and it's like, you know, Frank for a long time, he had a part, he, I don't want to say party problem. He was just really good at partying. And I love the guy. Like, don't think I'm talking shit about Frank Kern by any means, but like I'm watching him and it looks to me like he's trying to shove $300,000 cars into emptiness, into a feeling of a, a lack of fulfillment, into maybe borderline depression. I have no clue, but like, and you see this a lot of times, midlife crisis is like, oh, I'll just go get a Ferrari. You know, let's just stuff a $150,000 thing or a $300,000 thing in that empty feeling I have inside. And it's like, no, 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 that's not gonna lead to fulfillment. It's enjoyable for a little bit of time, but all of fancy cars is a bro magnet. The only people who pay attention to fancy cars are 18 year old dudes. I've seen so many people driving around Lamborghinis and they got a bunch of like, they thought the girls were gonna be impressed and it's a bunch of 18 year old dudes trying to take selfies. It's, it's so hilarious. And then it becomes empty again because fulfillment is not found through things. <clears throat> and it actually makes life a lot more complex and it minimizes the amount of freedom. And I feel really good knowing that I can shut down, winterize my house and bail out my camper truck um, for six months extended trip if I wanted to. I can lock down and fly out of the country and I could be gone for two, three years if I want to and come back and the house will be paid for. Everything will pay for itself. It's all on auto and it's that that free. And that actually comes from not having a lot of things, from having a surplus um, and from investing effectively. Um, Got it. So you're you're starting uh, Santiago. So you're starting an SaaS com a SaaS company. Um, how would I start driving traffic to it for property management people? Um, so literally, I would probably have a virtual assistant go find every property manager in a few key metros, and I would start doing outreach with them directly. I would probably start a podcast for teaching property managers how to be better at property management, and I would probably. Um, interview the best property managers in the world. I would also get that content onto YouTube. I would start blogging. And then when I'm ready to actually pay for advertising, I would be on LinkedIn and I would be targeting people who do property management. Um, Wanderlust has so many tech solutions, paid ads, funnels. Everybody's talking about webinars, classes, funnels. What about a low price point like us trying to sell bags of fresh roasted coffee? Yeah, so bootstrap it. You don't need any of that bullshit. Uh, straight up Wanderlust coffee and I love my coffee. So um what do you need to sell? Like you need content and a sales mechanism. And like literally, let's, let's be real. PayPal is a sales mechanism. There's ways to get a little bit better than PayPal. Um, are you WordPress friendly? I would learn the basics of WordPress. I think, I think having basic WordPress skills would be super powerful. There is a plugin called the eStore plugin. It's on a blog called um, HQ Tips and Tricks. Dot com. There's a dash in there. So if you type in HQ tips and tricks, comma, WordPress e-store plugin, search that it's like a $50 plugin. This plugin, oh, you need the $99 version to take Stripe. So with that one plugin on a WordPress site, WordPress is a hundred bucks for hosting. And you can figure out how to do that on my blog, milesbecker.com slash go to milesbecker.com on the top, how to start a blog. Okay. So now you have a blog that was a hundred bucks and then you have this plugin that's a hundred dollars. Okay. The plugin ties into PayPal and Stripe. This allows you to handle transactions. From here, you just need eyeballs on offers. You need to make lots of offers. So if you have a big Instagram following, you can make offers in stories, swipe up, and you could direct them to a landing page that has a buy now button right there. You can be at the roaster show, yo, we're roasting up this brand new, super Ethiopian gold, like whatever. You're showing it. You're like, if you want a bag of this, this is a very limited edition roast, swipe up and claim yours now. Now, there's only 10 bags available and you won't be able to buy once it's done. They swipe up, they buy, you get their name address, you send it out to them. Perfect. So um, I went very technical. Um, zooming out, 
the idea of running a lean startup, the idea of testing your minimum viable audience, your minimum viable funnel, what is the minimum viable tech you need is where I would. And those two things are enough because, so let's say you want to do like live selling, like a webinar experience, like just use YouTube, right? Like, like this could be a webinar. If I wanted to be a douchebag and like try to sell you into some shit you don't need, I could have just promoted, 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 promoted nonstop on this. Like people do on a webinar. You could take that same webinar based, uh, process, right? Teach for 60 minutes, sell for 30 minutes type thing, teach them one big thing and then transition into the, the value stack and add on three bonuses. And, but today, blah, blah, blah. Like I can do that on YouTube live. This is free, right? So it's, it's like there, there's totally ways to, to work around the fringe and work around the edges on the tech. You don't need all of the tech solutions. Technically you need an audience of people who want stuff from you. Then you need a mechanism to accept their payment. And this page should have really good sales copy. That's it. So, so bring it down to its simplest format. Get those few things built out. And then can you sell coffee? Can you do it online? What's, is it Instagram? Is it better on, on YouTube? Should you start blogging? Like, like those are the questions. It's more about audience, audience engagement, and how can you best drive traffic? Because if you don't have swipe up on Instagram, you can't drive traffic anywhere. Like, oh, link in bio, right. How many people actually take time to go link? Nobody. But here on YouTube, link in the description right here. I can put the link right here in the live chat, which I've done. I know people clicked on that link, right? People are looking at these things I'm telling them about. So try to bring it down to some of those kind of levels. Um, Brenda, you made it on. I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you made it on the, the live. So Jeanette says that you do Uber eats to pay for the bills while making this happen. You're listening to CD books that you get from the library and you get new ones every week. Um, you wouldn't have ever been able to focus with, with social media. Jeanette, see if they have um, at your library is a Nightingale Conant program called um, Prosperity Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman, L-E-H-R-M-A-N. Um, on Audible, it's just one credit. It's like a $50 product, but on Audible, it's one credit. So if you've never gotten an Audible, you can get one free credit and you can go get that. It is such a great mindset and I love that you're hustling and it's gonna, it, it just would be great content for um, that space that you're in and good on you doing the hustle. Um, you're doing the hustle that people want right now, right? More people using to try and Uber Eats right now than ever before. Um, again, it was Prosperity Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman. Somebody else produced a book under that name, but Frederick Lehrman, L-E-H-R-M-A-N. Um... So Wanderlust Coffee, um, nearby Coffee Co. Um, you have a WordPress site, but how do you get traffic there in any significant volume? So writing articles, teaching people how to make the best damn coffee in the world, teaching people the ins and outs of coffee. Um, social media can drive back. YouTube videos can drive back. You've probably heard me mention my blog 17 times on this um, live stream here at this point. So um, so Erica says, how come you only paid around $30 for WordPress? You're confused. I don't know. Uh, it's all hosting, right? The average hosting, if you pay annually, is about seven, eight bucks a year, which comes out to about $100 per year, give or take. Um, Mark F says, you used on-demand training instead of a real webinar when you start, started out. It worked as well, totally. Um, so the plugin, uh, Interpret, is... Um, e-store like the, the word e like electronic e-store plugin and the brand is tips and tricks hq um remember the tramp park in tahoe 99 2000 absolutely blinders on peace you're out of here get on you mate get on it um cool i'm glad you found my content uh next door coffee we need to change that name there y'all i'm feeling in the throat i gotta figure out um so i gotta learn me how to breathe and talk better i hold my voice right here in my throat and I'm feeling, I don't know if you can hear my, my voice is all raspy. So I think I'm going to call it not bad, about two and a half hours in my throat coat tea is now gone. It's been quite the ride with you guys here. Um, a couple of last ones popping in Carlo. Um, you got a WordPress food blog and you're working on an online bakery. So if you're WordPress and which you use Shopify or WooCommerce, if you're WordPress, uh, proficient, like WooCommerce is going to fit right in. Like I, I totally would lean in that direction. If you're like, 
WordPress freaked me out. I barely got it to this state. I feel like it's fragile. I don't want to break it. Shopify is going to be the bulletproof solution, but it's going to cost you to get it going. Um, should you use Bluehost to host your WordPress? Absolutely not. Bluehost is the worst. They're owned by the evil corporation that's just killing small businesses. Um, go search on my channel for the web hosting conspiracy revealed. I explain that and where who you should, should use. Or you could just go to milesbeckler.com and on the top navigation, there's the how to start a blog and I walk you through where to go and what to use. Um, do I have a book resource res recommendation on investing in real estate as an investment, not a main business? Um, you know, I haven't been in that space for a while, meaning the education space. I've been investing, but I haven't been learning much. Um yeah, like the bigger pockets audiobooks is probably what I would start with. Um, and Carlo, if you're on Bluehost, like if it's okay, you're fine. But if they start glitching out on you, their support, if their support sucks, they're just owned by this uh, corporation that takes over what once were good quality independent um, hosting companies. And then they just, they got them. They, they got support. The support times go up. They overcrowd the servers, the servers slow down. And so you, you essentially get worse service for the same price. Uh, and it's terrible. Um, Jinping, I, I recommend affiliate marketing for most people, but it depends on what your skills are. Cause if you've got merchantable skills, being a freelancer can be a great way to go. And I have an affiliate marketing 2021 video. Um, Willie, good to see you on here. Um, man, you were on at the beginning. So, uh, you're a singer, you drink the throat coat tea. Um, I've also got this spray. It's called like a sing I think it's called singer spray and it's herbs. And I didn't, I, I normally have it on my desk, but I just moved and I got shit in boxes. So, um, yeah. So Jinping, I think blogging and affiliate marketing, that overlap is the best place to go. Uh, Yesnia uses a two who I like. Um, yeah, they always help you when you break something and like, you get it, Yesnia, you're there. Like, and if you noticed, and I don't know if you were there before I was for a long time, like, like I don't want to break anything. And what happens is when we get over that and we're like, I'm just going to make shit happen. And then we break stuff and we're like, ah, I broke it. Like, and then there's always a way to roll it back. You can spend an extra $2 a month and you can get, um, all kinds of automatic updates and backups and stuff and their support can like, I've never broken a website to the point where it caused any real problems. Um, and that's, that's just where we learn is like, you know, get a hosting company that has decent support, get a theme that has decent support. So when you break something, because it's inevitable, uh, that they can get you back up and running and, and buy the backups. Like it, it's that simple. Um, Brandon Watson says the UK just announced another lockdown. Could I give you some tips, more motivation? I'll start doing affiliate marketing. You think you're going to start with kitchen niche, get on it. Just start, stop thinking about it and start doing like it's it, the time is now more people will spend more time in the kitchen. So just really, really, really get through it. Um, Interpre thrive is the answer to that question. Um, Demetrius, glad to have you on here. Um, Jason Luft, it's irrelevant. Just get that first post done. If a uh, affiliate link fits neatly in it, go. If not, go. Either way, go. Because it's not about this first one. It's about your 100th post and your 150th post. And you can't get to number two until you finish number one. Can't get to number three until you finish number two. Can't get to number four and, and take one step. Just start going. Um, Maria, no, I do not recommend Senlane. I don't recommend anything that Anik Signal or Signal or whatever his name is. I don't recommend anything he touches or builds. Um, if you want my recommendations, go to milesbeckler.com. On the top navigation, you have my recommendations. Um, how do people pay for things when most everything can be found for free online? Oftentimes they're paying for the organization and the time savings and the community, right? So yes, it, the information is available free online, but they want it in a very, very concise, like my friends at, at the authority site solution, which is um, milesbeckler.com slash T-A-S-S. It's an affiliate marketing course. You could learn all that stuff online, but it might take you a hundred hours to learn it. Or you could buy their course, save 96 hours and just get straight to the point, straight to the point, straight to the point. It also gives people confidence to move forward when they purchase. Um, there's The purchase is more about the emotional value they're getting than it is the thing. And when, when you learn that as a copywriter and as somebody who sells things online, the, the world opens up. Um, Jason, happy to, uh, happy to share that with you. And on no that note, y'all, we gonna call it 251 thumbs up, 149 people made it to the end. Good on each and every one of you two hours and 30 minutes in. This is incredible. Um, 
I'll see you on the next one. I, I really do appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And uh, I don't know, had fun. Maybe do these live things again at some point. Um, yep. So Brandon Watson says, thank you, Miles. Hate to be cringe, but it's nice to see somebody who actually produces content instead of flashing some lambs, Lambos, I like to call them, screaming, make 10K next month from now. Um, I'm glad you're taking the advice. Like, I ain't got a Lambo. I got a pickup truck. It's a really, really, really nice pickup truck. I got a sliding camper. It turns into an RV. I can go off the grid for weeks at a time. I get to go see mountains and lakes and streams and paddleboard and hike in places that most people only look at pictures on Bing and Windows startup screens of. I experience those. And to me, that's my that's my Lambo. That's that's my church. That's my, my life. Um, and that's just what I'm here to do. So I appreciate you all. I will catch you on the next video. Got another video coming out Monday. Um, if you made it to the end, like it, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications here on YouTube. If you want more information from me, more tips, more tricks, more content, more help from me, go to uh, milesbeckler.com forward slash emails, E-M-A-I-L-S, milesbeckler.com forward slash emails. Enter your email address, get on my list. I send lots of emails. I send more helpful stuff via email than I do make here on YouTube videos because these videos take a lot out of me and it's a lot easier for me to share my million dollar tips and tricks via email. So that's what I do. And if you want them, go get them. Milesbeckler.com forward slash email. Alas, I will catch you later. Thank you for your time and uh, appreciate engaging with you here on this. Be well.